You're listening to the Angry Marks Podcast Network. Hello and welcome back to a special edition of Over the Top Radio. I am your host, Ed, in San Antonio, and I'm joined by a very special co-host tonight, uh, Tom Richards, formerly of the Uncle Mike and Tom Show, and we, w- we will be talking about the big, huge, incredible Rise and Shimmer weekend that took place last week that I was there live for, and it was one incredible one hell of an event and a memory I will never forget. But before we get to that, Tom, how are you doing today? What's going on, my man? You got me out of podcast hiding on this show. What, what's up with that? I had no clue you guys were gone. Where am I going to come on and talk about all the good and bad stuff of Wrestle Circus and piss people off and all that shit? Right, he sends me a message the other day asking if he want if I want him to be on the podcast this week, and I'm like, dude, we stopped doing the show over a month ago. <laughs> it just putting together that type of show was just so time consuming that uh, I just got burned out doing it, man. It's it's not that I don't love independent pro wrestling, just the time that it takes to put into that. Unfortunately, you know, I don't get paid to do it, so it, it kind of got tough after six years. Yeah, I mean, I, I I know how you feel. I mean, this is the first show that uh, I've done in in a few months, and it's been real sporadic the last year. And uh, we got to over 400 episodes, but once you get to 400 episodes, it's like, what the fuck is there to talk about that we already haven't talked about? And do I really want to attend all the time setting this thing up when, like you said, I don't get paid and I could be sleeping or getting high or something like that? So I, I feel you. <laughs> I feel you. Uh, but uh. We'll we'll go ahead and, and get back to the uh, to the the shimmer and rise stuff now. Unfortunately, my laptop died a horrible death, and uh, I basically use my phone for everything. So it's really hard for me to talk on the phone and not switch the speaker, which would probably sound shitty. And every time I've used a headset on this on this, it sounds it doesn't sound that great. So I'm gonna need you to kind of. Run down the matches. Now, usually when I would do your show, you would run down all the match, matches first, and then i talk about it. But uh, what I want to do is basically, we'll just because I set the show for two hours, and we we got overrun if it goes even longer. So I hope you're prepared. I hope you you do what you're getting into when you agree to this. So let's do each match <laughs> one by one. Uh, the pre-matches, I won't spend a lot of time with, and... You know, once we get to the, you know, once we talk about certain wrestlers, it, I won't have to talk about them again. It'll just be about the matches. So it'll slowly get quicker and quicker going by. So let's go ahead and let's let's try and do that if you don't mind. Not a problem. Did you attend the Rise show on Friday night? Yes, I was there. I actually got there at uh, about uh, eight a.m. in the morning, and uh, luckily, I was smart. And I booked my room for Thursday through uh, through Monday because, you know, when you get to town at 8 in the morning, the hotel ain't got a room ready for you most of the time, and you got to wait your ass to about 3. So I spent a little extra money, but it was a little, it was worth it because I got there, I ate, I crashed out, and then I was good to go for a rise that night. See, I had some smart things uh, from a and veteran thought, wrestling and, uh, traveler. Yeah. <laughs> And, and I'll tell you what, this Texas boy, I went there with just a tiny little windbreaker because I didn't give a fuck. I knew it was going to be really cold that weekend, but, you know, I've been I've been stuck in this Texas summer for months, and I wanted to enjoy the cold, so I didn't take a big coat. I just took a windbreaker. I got out of the airport. My breath is frozen. It was like 20 degrees. There was like a light snow. People were like looking at me like, what the fuck's wrong with this dude? And I was enjoyed every second of that fucking Chicago weather. It was awesome. That's spoken like a true San Antonian. Enjoy the cold. Let me tell you from somebody that lives up here in the north, nobody enjoys the cold, man. It just doesn't happen. <laughs> well, this guy was. Uh, damn, we need to trade places. You can enjoy the cold for three, four months every year if you want to move up here to Pennsylvania. <laughs> I ain't enjoying shit when it's zero degrees out, let me tell you. <laughs> well, I wasn't driving in snow, so you know, I have I wasn't dealing with that aspect of it, but just uh just just the temperature was just was awesome for me. <laughs> 
But yes, wonderful cold Chicago in November for the uh, annual Shimmer tapings later in the year, man. Yeah. Now on the on the rise, this is a, they had a, like a I, I believe it was the fifth rise, and they brought it in, they flew in. They never actually announced it till the day of, but you'd have to be totally stupid not to figure out who the pitcher looked like, the shadow that they were bringing in Aja Kong to the seminar along with Medusa, and I believe uh, Matsumoto and one of the other Japanese girls also helped with the. Uh, with the training portion of it, the seminar portion of it, and uh, a lot of the shimmer wrestlers were there just because they wanted to hear everything they said, even though they just you know kind of sat to the background. I know like Nicole Savoy and a whole bunch of other ones were doing that, and uh, apparently they had a, a a really good class of uh, of uh, students taking the seminar because you know people a couple a couple of shimmers ago people were worried about when the WWE took like seven or eight of the girls that okay the desk's not going to be there shimmers not going to be the same and i'm here to tell you that that is not the case the people who have moved up to the shimmer have, have been doing a great job and what i've seen of the people who were on this show a lot of them have a lot of potential to to, to be in shimmer very soon and uh, uh i think it was a very successful in that you know they were looking for new talent like uh what the seminar is for. Yeah, it's definitely a changing uh, landscape on the independent women's wrestling scene uh, in the second half of this year. So many people have gone on to TNA or retired. and A lot of open spots for a lot of new girls to come up and grab on the indies and seeing a lot of new names. And even in Shimmer right now, it's they're definitely going through – uh, a change in, in developing a lot of new names and new stars to take over spots of people that have left. And this weekend was also tough for him because Pro Wrestling Eve was running over in Europe in like Nicole Matthews and Kaylee Ray and some of their regulars like that were on that show, so we're not available for the Shimmer Weekend. So that opened up even more spots for people to grab for the Golden Ring if you were Vince McMahon, right? <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah, and then T N A wasn't helping. Uh, well, they they did work out a deal to send uh, uh, oh Taya, uh, but you know the Rise lost uh, Chelsea for the night. They lost Rosemary. Rosemary was going to be in a big match, and uh, but it still worked out. I mean, they still got they got Chaza to replace Rosemary. They got uh, Taya to replace Chelsea. So I mean, at least there was some back. You know, uh, you know. Take a give, you know what I mean? It wasn't just like the the Eve that took my buddy Kaylee Ray and the Shimmer Taker Nicole Matthews, but uh, yeah, it was still everything about uh, that was great as far as that. But yeah, it's so like you were saying, Rise. This was their fifth show. As they've become like the developmental brand for Shimmer, and this is where I feel out of touch because. Being doing a weekly news cat news uh, independent podcast, I'd be in touch with different people in the business and nonstop. Now that I take, I, I stopped doing the show a month ago. I haven't talked to anyone, so I feel out of touch. They did not advertise Aja Kong till the day of the show, and normally I would know why, but since I've been like incognito, I have no idea why that was. But that was really strange. But like you said, the photo was very obvious that it was Asia Kong without coming out and saying that it was Asia Kong. Well, I asked I asked Kevin uh, uh, before, and I was like, dude, why don't you just announce it? Everybody knows who it is. He's like, we're not making even the announcement till she's in the country and through customs. So. They were just worried that something might have happened if they might have missed the show. So they were just playing it safe. You know, they didn't want people to say, hey, you, you probably hate Aja Kong and she's not here. I get that, and, and that makes sense because, man, the borders with Trump as president, it's not an easy deal sometimes getting in if you're from another country. But at the same time, they're very much advertising Bull Meccano for their December show. So wouldn't they be worried about the same problem there, you would think? I'm guessing they got something worked out, so maybe she'll be in the country before the day before the event. Uh, maybe they're not worried about it. Maybe she already has the ability to come into the United States. I don't know. It's it like 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 the thing is, it's very tricky. That's why Taya wasn't on TNA because they weren't sure she she could come back into the country, even though she's lives here and is married to an American citizen. So 
it's Trump. Trump's fucked everything up, so that we we can blame <laughs> Trump. Yeah, blame Trump for everything. Blame, but certainly the the right now traveling in and out of country is the hardest it's ever been. If you were from any other country, for sure, here in our free yeah. United States of America. <laughs> <laughs> but so this was the Fifth Rise show, and um, uh, it did feature Medusa in Asia Kong as the like star trainers because during the day they have seminars for the girls and whatnot and then at night the uh best girls get to be on the rise show with some rise regulars and how was the show itself in general the show itself was just was up there with the shimmer shows it was fantastic and uh they did have a bunch of uh pre pre pre-show matches i think they might i think they got everybody who went to the seminar on the show in one way or another um, I'm not positive, but because there was so many girls and so many matches that, that that's possible, but it was one hell of a show. I was so jacked for the rest of the weekend after the show, cause it was so great. There's so many awesome things that happened and, uh, you know, everyone got a, got a look at it. And a lot of the girls got to be in, uh, well, we used to be the sparkle position, but it's not, I guess now in the rice position and they got to be on the pre-shows and, and a, and a couple of them even made the actual shimmer shimmer shows itself. So it was, it was great, highly successful, and you know we can we can run down everything uh, that happened on the show. Yes, and that's what's great about Rise is even though it's one of those things where if you're a woman's performer, you got to pay to come out to the seminar. But not only do you get to train with some of the legends of the business, that has very much been the door to get into shimmer. As getting on the rise shows has been the easiest and best path to shimmer this year, and a lot of people that started on rise are now regulars in shimmer, so it's very much just like an investment into the girls if they really believe in their uh, careers. Because obviously, you all want to get the shimmer if you're a woman's wrestler. But all right, yeah. So let's run down the shows. Is uh, the opener was a six woman tag as it was Samara, Trixie, Tash, and Palm. Paloma Starr defeating London Alley, Savannah Stone, and Robin after Samara hit an implant buster on London Alley. Yeah, th- this match was uh, it was okay. I mean, it was basically six green girls having a match, and uh, it wasn't bad. It was it, w- it was okay, and uh, it's really hard because I see, saw so much wrestling and so many so many wrestlers. It's hard to really make a whole lot of comments about the match or what I remember about the performers because I only saw them so this is probably the only time I saw these ones but Paloma Paloma Star is one half of the worst shimmer match I ever saw uh she has gotten (laughs) better uh but uh I still have that memory of her and uh and uh, Kelly Klein or Mary Elizabeth Monroe she was going for and that was one of the worst shimmer matches I've ever seen in my life but uh they were they were working hard and Medusa was watching every match, so you could tell, like, you could just see, like, a little nervousness in some of their faces. But, like I say, the match was good, and, uh, you know, it, it, I enjoyed it. I mean, it was nothing nothing bad really went went wrong or anything. But, it, like I say, it was a match with six year girls, so it was about what you would expect, just a little better. And I got to admit, I think I only am familiar with, like, one of the six girls myself in that match. So definitely talking about a lot of girls just starting out in their careers and getting their name out there. Yeah. We then had Hyen defeat Indy Hartwell in the second match. Okay, this match was was pretty good. Uh, Haya is I I saw her at the last uh, Sabotage show here that I went to. I think she could possibly be a Booker T trainee. I'm not too sure, but she has a great look, uh, a really great look. She's a, re- a very attractive girl. Indy Hartwell is from Australia, and she also has a good look. And they had a they had a really, they had a good match. They had a, uh, I don't you know I can't say it was like a really great match, but they had a good match. They got to show show what they could do. They got a little time, and uh, I I was impressed with both of them actually. Excellent, good to hear. We didn't have Lane Rosario come out and say she deserves a match on the show, and it's probably never a great idea to offer an open challenge in Berwyn, Illinois, on a Shimmer weekend. And Lufisto came out and accepted a challenge and beat her via a burning hammer. 
this was a surprise because you don't expect Mephisto to be on the pre-show. And I think they were broadcasting the pre-show on Facebook. <coughs> but, uh, you know, Lefisto came out. Lefisto's great. And uh, I actually got to meet her, and I'll talk about that more as as the show goes on. And uh, uh, I, I'm assuming it's one of Lefisto's girls. That's why Lefisto would, like, work with her and put her over. But, you know, I don't have the knowledge to know that's for sure. But, you know, it was it was a it was a good little match. Lefisto was awesome, and and the girl, you know, she she hung hung with her with her during the match. I mean, she didn't get like a whole lot of stuff, but she did get some, and she was there, no mistakes. She she had a good showing, and uh, yeah, that was a uh, it was like I say, a big surprise. Lefisto in the pre-show. Absolutely, Lefisto is one of the best in the business, you know. Definitely wouldn't expect her to be on the pre-show over Rise show, but there you go. And uh, good to see Lefisto still out taking all the dates. She actually lives here in Pennsylvania now. Is her and her husband run a promotion like ninety minutes from me down in ACW down in the Reading area, and they're doing pretty decent with that. And she's still the Shine Champion as well. And here on Rise and Shimmer Weekend, man, you can never go wrong when Lefisto's in the house. Yeah, she's she's so solid. I mean, she. I don't think Lefisto could have a bad match. You know what I mean? Probably not, right? <laughs> yeah. Moving on, we then had Heather Monroe coming in from the West Coast. She defeated Renee Michelle via submission. Yeah, this is uh, everyone might know right Renee Michelle from uh, the May Young Classic, and she's also been on Shine and. Uh, She's got a very exotic look. I think she's a she's a mixture of a few different races. Uh, one of them being Native American Indian, and uh, just a a different. She's, you know, looks has a little bit of a different look. And she's a solid wrestler. I mean, the the WWE wouldn't have hired put her on there if she was horrible. Heather Monroe comes out with this furry jacket that's white and black, and she has white hair, and it kind she kind of like had this Corilla Deville look from uh, 101 Dalmatians. But she's actually very solid, very has a lot of, uh, chem, uh, what do you call it? Uh, <laughs> I always forget what the hell I'm talking about. She has a lot of uh, uh, charisma, and uh, uh, she's, she looks like she could, she'll be on the Shimmer roster in the future. I mean, I was very impressed with her. She's, she's, she's got it. You know, she's got a little bit of ways to go. But, you know, it takes time. It takes uh, a time for people to get to the top or to the best of their abilities, but I thought she was really good, and Renee Michelle was good. Yes, Renee Michelle was recently announced, engaged to Rockstar Spud. So all the short people in the world, you still have chances out there. See, Rockstar Spud representing well. <laughs> wow, Heather I didn't, Monroe, I didn't know that. That's, that's right. Yeah, yeah, like about a month ago it was announced, man. Rockstar Spud. Doing all right for himself. <laughs> and he's yeah. WWE yeah. bound, man. So he's doing really good for himself. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> good for him. And Heather Monroe, regular out in California, man. I think that's been one of the things in the past missing from Shimmer Weekends is West Coast talent because them California flights are not cheap. But lately, that's definitely been changing. And Heather Monroe is another one. She regularly works for AWS in California. And Teams with Joey Ryan's wife, uh, Laura James, in bar wrestling sometimes as well. And she's having she's scared. having a last woman standing match with uh, uh, Hudson Envy in in Las Vegas tonight. Interesting, man. Hudson Envy. I'm a big Hudson Envy fan. I think she's one of the better women's workers that doesn't get the uh, pub that she deserves. Yeah, sure and I got about to Hudson hang out with Hudson. Go on because she was she was at the Shimmer tapings, right? Yeah, and uh, I, I got to hung out with uh, her, and I hung out with her before. And uh, besides being an awesome wrestler, she's one cool fucking chick. I mean, she's freaking awesome. That's cool to hear. It's always cool to hear that like the the the, the workers you like turn out to be cool people too. <laughs> yeah. Moving on, <laughs> we had Jules Malone defeated Holly Lane via Fireman's Carry Stunner. Okay. Jules Malone, um, she's good. She's got like a lot of fire, uh, which is good. I, I I really don't remember a lot about her uh, her opponent. Unfortunately, I can't really say too much. But this was this was good. Uh, nothing great or anything. It was kind of short. Uh, it kind of seemed like a showcase for Jules Malone, in a way. And like I say, she's got fire, and 
she could, she, you know, uh, I think she could be a player. I don't see her like ever being in the top F echelon, but I mean, she's get, she's getting better. She's she's good. Yeah, I've always been a <laughs> Jules Malone fan. She's uh, a Canadian from the Toronto area and always gives a good effort and is continually improving. She used to be a regular for WSU, but hasn't been there in quite a while. I don't know what happened there. But she is a regular for Shine now and got the victory here. So uh, good for Jules Malone. Yeah. We didn't have the yeah, Sinister did Sweethearts. Br- Go ahead. The, Swinister, the Sinister Sweethearts of Brittany Blake and Samantha Heights who have been a regular tag team in WSU, bringing their act out to the Midwest, defeated Valentina Loca and my old co-host, Uncle Mike's favorite wrestler, Amanda Carolina Rodriguez. And you'd kill me if you knew I said that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was, I was uh, after seeing Samantha Heights at the last Shimmer tapings where she had four awesome matches and really showed so much improvement and just, like, working hard. And she she was, like, one of the girls that I really wanted to meet because I actually hadn't met her yet at that point. So I was excited. And then when I heard that Brittany Blake was on the seminar, I was hoping that they'd team because they do have a – they're it, it, it's kind of hard because they're a heel team for the most part, and they're so tiny, so it's kind of hard for them to be, like, really super heelish to get the mm-hmm. heat on, like, people like me AM or so-and-so. But they do have a great act and a great look, and – they have a lot of great tag team moves, so I was really excited to see this team, and like, and, and and luckily I got my wish. And uh, Val- what, is Valentina Loca is that the name again? Yes. Yeah. Okay. I always wanted to just say La Vida Loca. Uh, she <laughs> uh, she was on the last the last t- there the last time, and basically she came out. She's a little cholo chola girl, like a little gangbanger girl, basically from the hood. It's like her gimmick, and she's tiny. She's the smallest person there by far. Uh, I mean, she is so <laughs> little. And the, the last time she came out and cut promos and was talking, you know, like a Crash Holly, talking bigger than they actually are, you know what I mean? And basically she got killed uh, all basically uh, the last time by, like, bigger girls. And just it was like a, one move and done, you know what I mean? They did one move to her, killed her, and then that was it. And this time when I saw it was a tag match, and she was teaming with ADR, who's been around for quite a while. Uh, I know you guys aren't the biggest fans of her. Uh, I've, you know, I, I like her because I've met her, and she's been like super cool to me. So I'm not going to say anything else. But you know, it was a it was a, a, a decent match, and it was I was so happy to see Valentina get some moves and to, and to actually get to work because, uh, like I say, she just got squashed the last time. But it was a decent. Uh, it, was, it was a good match. Uh, uh, Samantha was awesome. Brittany was good, and uh, they carried the other two to a, uh, to a good match. And uh, like I say, I was just so happy for Valentina to uh, to actually get some offense on this show. So I I highly enjoyed this match. Yes, Valentina Loca is actually from the Black and Brave Academy in Iowa, which has a. Uh, trainer that some people may have heard of. His name is Seth Rollins. You may have heard of him, a.k.a. Tyler Black. So she comes from a very good school, man, really young into her career, just starting out, regular for SCW in Iowa. And uh, I think she's cute as hell, so I always like seeing her get an opportunity here. <laughs> right. uh, I, th- I think she mentioned it's- that she's going to the Ohio area to do some training there. Um so hopefully she'll, she's like, you know, she, she really seemed, okay, because the last night uh, she sat with us, with some of us at, at dinner, and it was so funny because, like, she's kind of quiet, and Hudson Envy's like, why are, you, why are you so quiet? And, you know what I mean, don't be afraid to talk, and she just talked about how the, like, one of the, you know, young girl, young boy rules were like, you know, stay quiet, listen. And she was, you know, not trying to piss anybody off. She just wanted to take everything in. And uh, apparently, like, in in the locker room, she would move her stuff if it looked like other people needed the room. And I think a lot of the girls in the back took notice of her just for the fact of how professional she was. And, uh, uh, you know, she's starting off on the right foot because she, a lot of the girls, from what I hear, liked her and, 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 and thought highly of her just from the way she conducted herself behind the scenes and everywhere else. Good to hear. It's actually 
a good thing in real life too is that shut your mouth and open your ears. You'll learn a lot, man, just by listening. You know, <laughs> but that's definitely yeah. what the youngsters should do in the business. And uh, she's a star now. It's good to hear she's going to go to Ohio for some training too. It's always good to get a bunch of training from different places, man. You can never go wrong. Always learn. So good for her. Yeah. And you made a good point. Brittany Blake and Samantha Heights make a great team, but it is weird that they're heels when they're both such tiny girls, but they pull it off and do it really well. And I'm happy to see that Kevin Harvey brought them out to the Midwest and they got a big win here on Rise Five. Yeah, they just look perfect together. They look they really look like they, they, they mesh well just in appearance and they ha- they do have great teamwork and they had some good matches later on. And they do. They make a good team, and they work well together. And they're both, man, really young in the business. And really, two of the younger girls, I think, have really high ceilings for potential, good things to come. Moving on. Oh, definitely. Like, had, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. And say no, we no, then had ahead, Allie, like, yeah, Allie Cat defeated Tasha Steeles via headbutt. Allie Cat's from uh, Texas doing a... Uh, cat gimmick and Tasha Steele has been wrestling a lot of indies around my area here in Pennsylvania, New Jersey lately. I believe she's a, I want to say Damien Adams trainee like Deanna Perrazzo and Karen Q, I believe. Or she's Monster uh-huh. Factory, one or the other. She she was good. Uh, she was good. I, I uh, You know, I'm very familiar with Alley Cat so I kind of was keying in on Alley Cat more. Uh, she's the first time I saw Alley Cat, she was just doing Ring Crew at an Inspire show or, and the circus shows and She's made her way onto the shows, and she's improved leaps and she, there's something about some of these Texas girls that they improve incredibly, like the lot of doom. She's like the new the lot of doom. She just gets better and better every time. She's uh, lost some weight. She's getting in better shape, and I think she decided to go to the seminar like maybe the day before. I guess maybe they had an opening, and the lot of doom talked her into going. And uh, she made a good, uh, they had a good match. I, I was impressed with both of them. And uh, and uh, hopefully we'll see more of both of them. And, and you know, I'm a lot, big Alley Cat fan just because, you know, I get to see her so much. And I got to see her career go from, like I say, a ring crew to now having good matches at Rise. You know, I agree with everything you said about Alley Cat. I'm not a, a huge fan. She hasn't really won me over at this point. But the one thing that I really give her credit for is her hustle and drive to get bookings and work all over the place, and that's the way to improve and get much better, and she's certainly doing that, as I see her name popping up all over the place. And God love her, man. That's how you do it. Get them bookings, get that work, and improve, and she's doing all the things you got to do starting out in your career to get better. Oh, definitely. And she got the win here. We then had Zoe Lucas cuts a promo saying she's the leader of the cupcakes and the best cheerleader, which brings out cheerleader Melissa. Cheerleader Melissa then defeated Zoe Lucas via air raid crash. Once again, open yeah. challenges in, Ber- in a shimmer weekend in Berwyn is not a good idea. <laughs> yeah, and she before that, before she she, she made the uh, she, she she made a comment that cheerleaders now you're in a real cheerleader. She made the comment that she's the best from England, and at first we thought. Soraya was going to come out and kick her ass, and uh, <laughs> Zoe Lucas, I was very impressed with her. I, I'm I'm hoping she's the new Nixon Noel or Noel Nixon uh, or whatever. Uh, she she has a great look. She's very pretty. She's very young. Uh, I don't know exactly, but I wouldn't be surprised if she's not even of the legal drinking age. She looks so young, and uh, great gear. I mean, her gear is awesome. She had like a Union Jack as kind of like a cape. And uh, cut a great promo. And she's not as good as, uh, you know, Nikki Cross or uh, Nikki Storm used to be. But uh, she did cut a good promo and make comments like about how she was excited to go to IHOP and then she had the food and and just shit like that and getting a lot of heat. And then cheerleader Melissa, you know, one of the OGs of Shimmer, came out and they had a really good match. And uh, cheerleader it was back and forth match, but cheerleader was kicking her ass when she was on offense, and uh, and uh, cheerleader got the win. But very great first performance by Zoe Lucas. Lucas, I'm sorry, and uh, she did great all weekend, and I hope she's a regular now. And uh, she's someone WWE will be picking up in the near future, and in, in a few years when she gets more experience, I almost can guarantee you that. 
You heard it here first. Ed says she's going to end up in NXT. <laughs> I'm sure she was super excited to get to work with Shirley or Melissa this weekend. So good for her. Speaking of Saraya Knight, yeah. she was in the next match as she defeated Ray Lynn, Karen Q, and Miranda Salinas in a four way when she made Ray Lynn tap out to a submission. So, so Ryan Knight is one of the very unsung heroes of the weekend. Not because of what she was doing, but what she did for other people throughout this show. And in a way, she helped make uh, Miranda in, in this match. And uh, Miranda uh, from the Mae Young Classic, and uh, on the other team you had uh, Ray Lynn, who looks like she could be Heather Monroe's sister, because uh, they both have white hair and very similar and Karen Q, who's from uh, Women of Honor and starting to make some, some names. This is my first time seeing both of them. And uh, basically, it was a four-way. And, uh, you know, Karen Q and, and Ray Lynn were heels, and Miranda was a baby face. And then, you know, Soraya, you know, is just the baby face because she's the kick-ass one. And she gets, Soraya gets in the ring, gets right behind Ray Lynn. Ray Lynn turns around starts screaming and waving her arms in horror and just runs out of the ring in this very dramatic, uh, <laughs> terrified way and jumped out of the ring. And I, th- I thought that was fucking awesome. But basically the match was is Karen and Raylan wanted nothing to do with Soraya. They would only wrestle against Miranda. So they'd get a lot of heat on Miranda. And then Soraya would encourage Miranda to fight back, which she would. And she would show a lot of fire and make comebacks. And then if she got attacked with Soraya, the other two would just jump out, didn't want nothing to do with Soraya. Soraya would attack back Miranda, and then same thing, they'd get heat, and then she'd fire her back, and she was really great with her comebacks. And then finally Soraya got in there and just beat the shit out of Karen Q and, uh, and Ray Lynn. And uh, they, the two of them ended up, they were trying to work together, but they ended up not being, you know, they screwed it up. And then the next thing you know, they're just screaming and yelling and, insulting each other and they were actually they just had this great chemistry of not getting along and just talking nonstop shit to each other after the match after Soraya won and it it would continue to the next day but they were like I say this like I say Miranda got over big time and it was a lot of it was because you know Soraya and then the other two got over big time just with their talking ability because they had a lot of uh they were very charismatic and uh good chemistry of being the the friends who hate each other and shit. So yeah, this was this was really good. I really highly enjoyed this match. You can never go wrong when Soraya Knight's on the show, man. She's one of the uh, people that's worthy of buying a ticket just to see them perform alone. So it's always great to see her and shine working with the younger girls as she did here. And uh, Karen Q, I mentioned her earlier. She's from the same school as Deanna Perrazzo. So you see them together a lot on a lot of shows, and uh, she's been having a lot of good matches this year. And Ray Lynn has been uh, started out in Pittsburgh and moved to California, so she's been working both both coasts, and she's another one always improving and getting better and better, the a.k.a. Miley Cyrus of professional wrestling. But uh, Soraya Knight gets the victory in. Always good to see her on the rise shows for sure, man. One of the unsung heroes on oh. the indies. And she's got a pretty famous yeah, daughter as well. <laughs> Who's coming back very soon, from what I hear. Yes. And she finally got rid of that piece of shit, so good for her. Yeah, apparently she's single to boot. Go ahead. Take your opportunity now, Ed. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on to Cole Savoy in action on Rise as she defeated Kylie Ray via armbar. Kylie Ray, one of the girls, when the year started, I don't think anybody really outside of certain areas knew who she was. And by the end of the year, she's really raised her profile in the Midwest and has become one of the hot names in the Midwest Indies right now. And uh, taking on Nicole Savoy, she lost in defeat. But good to see her also get an opportunity on Rise. Yeah, she was at the that Sabotage show I went to against the Lila Doom in the main event, and um, they had a great match. And she's got a good look. She's tall. She's she looks like she's really young, and uh, can do a lot of stuff. A lot of she's a basically she's a smiley, happy baby face, and gets over that way. But then she gets she has a lot of fire as as the match goes, and she has 
her top is like a, peak, a picture of Pikachu, and uh, and she comes out to the uh, to the Pokemon theme song, which is kind of cool. And uh, yeah, she's uh, she's really good, really impressive. And uh, I think Kevin added her to the Rise roster uh, this past week, so that's that's a good sign. I mean, she'll be on the majority of the shows. And uh, yeah, a lot of upside and a lot of future for uh, Kylie Ray. And uh, Nicole was great. Nicole, uh, you know, she had a phenomenal weekend, as we'll get to. So, yeah, this was really good. I enjoyed it. And Kevin Harvey was at that mentioned sabotage show that you're at. And uh, like I said, Kylie Ray's been doing really good this year. So uh, it's good to see him add her to the shows because she definitely deserves it. I think she's going to be one of the girls that's going to be one of the regular names in the Midwest in the next couple years on the indie scene for the woman's side that people really become big fans of. We didn't had Taya Valkyrie, as you said, being added to the show since Rosemary was pulled by Impact Wrestling. She defeated Hudson Envy via a road to Valhalla. And uh, very interested to see this match on DVD. Is I'm um, a big fan of both. Yeah, it was really good. It was really good. Hudson came out and cut like a promo about why she her match really wasn't advertised and kind of upset about that, and then. Taya came out and they had a really good match back and forth and uh they were they were hitting each other pretty hard and uh they had a good hard fought uh battle and uh Taya got the win. I was kinda of hoping Hudson would get the win, but Taya got the win. But uh yeah, this is really good. Really, really good. We didn't had Shimmer Harder Wrestling Champion or Harder Shimmer Champion, Shaza McKenzie Defeated Thunder Rosa via roll-up. Thunder Rosa, the owner of Sabotage Wrestling, making her Rise debut. Certainly seems like Rise and Sabotage have a working agreement that has started between the two, which is definitely good for women's wrestling when promotions like that work together. Because Sabotage uses a lot of Cali and Texas talent. And that's definitely something that Shimmer and Rise could use more of. So I think that's definitely a relationship that work out well for everybody. It was good to see Thunder Rosa here on a Shimmer weekend on the Rise show as well. Thunder Rosa, also known as Cobra Moon on Lucha Underground. Uh, this was a really good match. <laughs> uh, it, it, it's funny because Shaz is a very popular but uh, I think Rosa was actually more popular because they did sell, like, cheaper tickets, and Berwyn is in a Mexican neighborhood, and I think a lot of Mexicans, well, I know a lot of Mexicans were at the show, so they were actually cheering for her a little more than Chaza, but they had a really good match. Thunder Rosa actually dominated the, I don't want to say the majority of the match, but she was in control a, a little more than, than Chaza was, but Chaza got the win, got to retain the title. Chaza is one of my favorites by far, personally. I love Chaza. Uh, she's probably the cutest wrestler who ever lived. <laughs> and uh, probably probably as far as babyface facials, when someone's getting the heat on her, I mean, no one's better at that. And, uh, yeah, I highly enjoyed this match. It was really good. Both girls were fantastic. And uh, it's a really good match to, to go out and see. Lucha Underground, so we signed this hot chick. Let's put her under a mask, man, right? <laughs> <laughs> Holy Lucha Underground. We had six-woman tag as Asia Kong actually performed in a match here in a rise, teaming with Jessica Troy and Charlie Evans. They had to be like out of their mind when they found out they were getting the team with Asia Kong. They defeated the team of Hiro Matsumoto, Rachel Ellering, and Dynamite Didi. Man, Jessica Troy, Charlie Evans, and Dynamite Didi getting to work with Hiro Matsumoto and Asia Kong. This had to be like a dream come true for all them young girls. Crazy, crazy times. <laughs> oh, I imagine. I think this was originally advertised as just it was going to be a tag team match. But when they came out and said it was going to be a six-man, I knew exactly that it was going to be the Blue Nation, Charlie Evans, who I am madly in love with Charlie Evans and Jessica Troy teaming with uh, with uh, Kong. And then uh, I was kind of surprised Rachel was in it because I thought they were just going to do, like, pick people who were at the seminar. But I think Rachel's a big Audra right. Kong fan, and I think she, she might have volunteered to do it. And uh, I figured Dee Dee was there to take the, take the loss because she's a – least an experience of the of the of the six but Aja Kong she's a lot older now. 
she's uh, uh, maybe a little heavier now, not a lot, but maybe a little heavier over the years. She's had, you know, a ton of injuries, but she is still one of the best fucking workers in the business. I mean, they played her music, which is, which is Judas Priest, and she made the people wait. I mean, she everyone just got more excited as they had to wait for her to come through the curtain. And then when she came in, I mean, I, I myself was just in awe of this woman. I couldn't believe I was watching Aja Kong, Aja fucking Kong live. <laughs> it was just right? blew my mind away. And uh, I'm thinking to myself, okay, Charlie and, and Jessica are going to work the majority of the match. Aja's probably not going to take one bump, and she's probably just going to come in and, and kill somebody, and that'll be it. But uh, no, she actually was even bumping that night. And Medusa made a, a comment on a tweet that she couldn't believe she took so many bumps for that match. Okay. And uh, Aja Khan brought her working boots. And, uh, you know, she didn't, she wasn't having like a match like against Manami Toyota or Bull Nakano, but she gave the people a lot more than she needed to. I mean, like I say, I would have been happy if she wouldn't have done a damn thing but kill somebody. And she, she worked her ass off. And the Blue Nation are a really good up-and-coming team, but they – they were good last time, and they were better this time. And uh, Charlie Ev- Charlie Evans just got a lot of uh, charisma. And, uh, I mean, like I say, I love her. And uh, Rachel ended up taking the fall, which I, I was uh, surprised. And uh, But apparently, like I say, that's probably like the highlight of her career so far. It might be the highlight of her career forever just to get to do the job to somebody like that. So, this was really, really good, and uh, yeah, this was fucking awesome. I was losing my mind watching Aja Kong. <laughs> yeah, man, I, I didn't mention Rachel Owen before, and should have certainly for her too, man. The idea that you're into Aja Kong, man, it's like pinch me. Is this real? Funny Aja Kong story. A couple years ago, I went out to Chicago for AAW in uh, Dreamwave weekend. And it was actually a Shimmer weekend where Shimmer was running that Saturday and Sunday. So I was hanging out at Shimmer during the afternoon before I made the trip down the Dreamwave and on Sunday before I went and caught my flight my flight back to Pennsylvania. And that weekend was the weekend that Asia Khan came to Shimmer for the first time as an unannounced surprise. And I'm just hanging out, killing time, waiting to drive the dream wave. And Asia Kong shows up. It was like, what the fuck? <laughs> that was quite a cool surprise. I'm just there hanging out, killing time, when all of a sudden Asia Kong's on the show, you know? <laughs> Moving on, in the main event, the Phoenix of Rise Championship was on the line in a five-way as Shotzi Blackheart defended against Deanna Perrazzo, Britt Baker, Kikio, Dust, and Delia Doom. And in a surprise, Delia Doom is your new Phoenix of Rise champion as she won the five-way match to become the third Rise champion. And congratulations to Delia Doom. And talk about someone who, in a short time, has exploded all over the women's indie scene. She's becoming quite the performer and star on the women's indies. Yeah, I mean, I, I've been—I I was probably the first person on a wrestling podcast to even talk about Delilah Doom, and uh, unfortunately, this is when she first started, and she wasn't very good. She always had that connection with the fans and was very charismatic, but you know, she is right out of wrestling school, so she's—you know—who very few people are, are good right off the start. So I saw her when she wasn't good. I saw her slowly get better and better and better, and now she's fucking awesome, and I'm so proud of her. For doing that it's like i've seen her whole career and i've seen where she's come from and where she's going and she's got a lot more to do in this business and very happy for her but i forgot to mention at the beginning of the show she came out and cut a promo and she had her wrist uh wrapped up and had a, a nice bag on it and she was crying and talking about how she was so happy to be there and and everything and and but she hurt herself at the seminar and uh she can't compete tonight and uh she she the match was kind of weird. It was kind of like the Royal Rumble rules, or like you know, two people started and then they would add. But the time length seemed like it was different between the different intervals. And uh, basically, Kevin Harvey, I guess, had to cut some deal where Rosemary and Kevin went heel for the for this match that that, that bastard. And uh, basically, he handed Dust a barbed wire bat, and basically that uh, Dust 
use that on on Chasse Blackheart, and Chasse Blackheart was eliminated, and uh, so that's how they got her out of the match. So then it looked like Kikio was going to be the champion because she was the last one uh, that was still in the match after Britt and, and uh, Deanna had got eliminated. So it looked like Kikio was winning the title, and then the Light of Doom's music hit, and with her arm all wrapped up, she came out and uh, and won the, and ended up winning the title, which was a big surprise, and, uh, you know, good for her. And then Rosemary's voice appeared, and they, she, they basically challenged her to a cage match at the next Rise show in California. So good angle uh, to go with the good match, and new champion Delilah Doom. Well, I do. Like you said, man, right from the start, she had that connection where she had the charisma and the presence and just that weird connection with the crowd. And now that her wrestling ability is catching up to that, man, she's become an all-around performer and a really cool chick. Last weekend, I was at Game Changer Wrestling, and uh, I was tweeting about Eli Everfly being on the show the first time I seen him live. And it turns out that they are boyfriend and girlfriend, so she started sending me messages asking how he was doing. So I was talking to her. It's a really cool chick, man. So uh, good for her, man. She's doing good things, and that's just <coughs> the start of what turned out to be a pretty goddamn good weekend for her here in Berwyn, Illinois. Oh, definitely, definitely. Hell of a weekend for her. <laughs> but, yeah, it was a great show overall. Um um, you know, I had, it was right up there with Shimmer. It's not like the, the to me, it wasn't like a developmental show. It was, you know, a really good indie show. And uh, Kevin should be very proud of himself for what he's accomplished. And uh, you know, I, I couldn't, I can't tell you how and all and how I felt when I got in the ring and Asia, Asia Kong standing in front of me with her hand out, ready to shake my hand, and then getting to meet Medusa, who I've been watching Medusa since the first time she came out on AWA TV and wasn't even a wrestler. She was the manager for freaking Kevin right. Kelly and freaking Nick Kaninsky. <laughs> and uh, she, she so be- suppressed her, 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 her wrestlers when she became a wrestler and, you know, Dangerous Alliance. And I got the whole the freaking WWE World Women's Championship that she threw in the trash live on Nitro, which <clears throat> one of the biggest <laughs> shots fired in the Monday Night War. I mean, it was just... I. I can't even tell you how ecstatic I was and what what that moment meant to me. <laughs> Taking the photo with him, it was awesome. I bet nobody thought they were going to hear the name Kevin Kelly when they turned this podcast on today. That's nails to you, Mr. Laredo. <laughs> <laughs> how many concern with the title change, though? That's three champions in five Rise shows, man. That's kind of hot potato on the belt more than I'd like to see. I thought Chachi Blackheart was doing uh, a great job as champion. But uh, congratulations to the Laya Doom, man. She uh, has earned it, so good for her. Oh, yeah. So that was the Rise show to kick off the weekend. So then we had two full days of Shimmer taping volumes 96, 97, 98, and 99. And started out on Saturday with 96 and 97. And an interesting weekend. is uh, open up with pre-show is once again Uncle Mike's favorite, Amanda Carolina Rodriguez, teaming up with Valentina Loca, defeated Samara and Holly Lane in a pre-show match. Holly Lane? I could have swore she was on... The the pre show from the other night, I don't remember hearing her name when we were reviewing it, but she looks like she's like 16. I mean, she looks incredibly young. She's got purple hair, and and she she did it all right. Um, this was a this was a decent match, and and now Valentina actually got a win on a Shimmer weekend. It was the pre match show, but I mean, I was just so I was marking out for that because uh, she's so awesome. So. You know, decent, decent, good match. You know, nothing super spectacular or anything, but, you know, it, it, I enjoyed it. And then in the second pre-show match, it was Miranda Salinas and Kylie Ray defeating Ray Lynn and Karen Q in a tag team match. And this, this was great. This was great because the wrestling was really, really good. 
And just hearing, because like I say, Karen Q and Raylan, nonstop, I mean, nonstop, we're talking shit to each other the whole fucking match. I mean, it, that, would, that was worth it just to see them and then having a really good match because all four of them can go. And Miranda was Miranda and Kaylee were over big time. And a lot of future potential between all four of these girls. And, you know, like I say, the the the, the Shimmer roster – is looking good because they got so many people that are ready to step in to take a spot if need be, and there's four of them right there as an example. We then opened up the main show with Kikio making what I could be wrong, but I believe this was her Shimmer debut, defeating Heather Monroe via Frog Splash. Kikio is a, a bigger girl, but uh, I've always been impressed with her work. She's originally from California. I believe she's now living in Florida. And she's been a regular on ACW down there, which is a WWN promotion. And she's been a regular there. And it's good to see her come in here and get the win over Heather Monroe. I mean, she's obviously she actually, familiar because they're both California girls. Yeah. She, um, she's yeah. actually been – she was on the last Shimmer tape, and she wrestled uh, Havoc. All right. And, uh, there you go. Yeah, so, so she's been there. Uh, this was – this, there was a scary moment here because she did this frog splash and got the win, but you remember when Eddie Guerrero... Know. Yeah, Eddie Guerrero did Heard that his frog splash. Heard on his first match in WWE, yes. That's exactly what happened. I guess she had a little too much weight on her one arm because, you know, I mean, if she comes down full force, she could hurt a girl because she's bigger. But, you know, she the way she landed, you could see the indention in her elbow... So right off the bat, I knew it was dislocated. I mean, you could it was real. You could really see it. And uh, she got out of the ring on her own power, and uh, she got a good a good hand for that. And, uh, like, I guess a lot of people thought it was broken at first, but it was just dislocated. So hopefully she won't miss. She's probably going to have to miss a few weeks, but hopefully nothing more than that, and hopefully she's all right. But this was, is this was a good match. Like I say, Heather Monroe, uh, she, she also has a lot of potential, so... It, it's it sucked she got hurt, but it was it was a decent match. Well, it's good to hear that it wasn't broken. I never want to see anybody get hurt. And uh, nice that Kikyo got the win. Unfortunate that she did get hurt in the match, but hopefully she won't miss too much time. Goddamn frog splashes! I'm telling you. Yeah, We're moving on. It looks awesome, here. but they're dangerous, more dangerous than they look like for the person doing the match, <laughs> actually. Right. We then had Rachel Ellering defeated Zoe Lucas, one of your early favorites here on the weekend. Yeah, and Zoe came out and she got she got a lot of promo time. She cut promos before every match basically and uh like I say, she's not as good as Nikki Storm, but she's got potential and I I really wish I knew how long she's been in the business and how old she is because like I say, she looks really young and uh She's really good though for her for her experience, and her and Rachel had a had a really good match. You know, Rachel's really solid. You know, she had the great run in Wrestle Circus until that one match, uh, unfortunately, that made Botchamania, and uh, you know that was that kind of sucked. But every, all her other matches uh, were awesome, like all her matches with Tessa and all the other ones in Wrestle Circus. I mean, she was a big highlight. She was one of my big highlights at Wrestle Circus. And uh, since she hasn't been back, uh, this is really good to see her because she's a really nice girl. I mean, she's a really nice girl. And I uh, hope this whole debacle thing gets put behind and, and everyone can forget it or whatever. And uh, it was just one match anyways. But she, she had a good weekend and she looked good here and uh, good for Rachel Ellery. We then had tag team action as Shimmer Champion Mercedes Martinez teamed up with Nicole Savoy. And they said they are recruiting a new member of their team since Shazza, or Shazza, Shayna Baszler is signed with WWE, or Greener Pastures, as they said. They're recruiting a new member, Asia Khan. Okay, this was the start to, like, one thing that I love about Shimmer is they have these, week, these weekend-long storylines that really pay off, and they build throughout the show. And this was the start of one of these incredible storylines and baby face turns. So basically they came out and they're, you know, they're buddy, buddy. And, you know, Savoy talks a lot of shit. And, uh, so they're, so Mercedes 
is about to introduce the new member, but she makes sure to make the comment, my new number two, which causes Savoy to just, like, look at her like, what? Why? What, why am I not number two now? Why? You know, and she's kind of like, you can tell she's very hurt and upset about it. And then Aja Kong comes in, and then Aja Kong, you know, hugs Mercedes, and she's like, is, are we good? Are you know, we, we this is good. We're gonna be good to Nicole, and Nicole's like, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. And but you could tell she still had her feelings hurt, and uh, so the three of them formed a new trifecta, and more was to come in the next uh, volumes. Planting the seeds for what's to come all That's, weekend yeah, exactly. long. Plant, they planted the seeds, and that that plant grew. <laughs> Excellent. Good stuff. Good booking, man. That's the way you do it. We then had the hottest free agents of Deanna Perrazzo in Madison Rain. They took on and defeated the Blue Nation of Charlie Evans and Jessica Troy. Yeah, this is a really good match. I mean, Deanna Perrazzo is just a, so, for her experience, I mean, she's great. I mean, especially, and she keeps it like very old school. She doesn't do nothing crazy, but she everything she does looks just fantastic. And, you know, Madison, or Ashley Lane, you know, the former Madison Rain from TNA, she's very solid, and she's been around a long time. She's really good. And the Blue Nation, I mean, I like I say, I love them. They're, they've got so much upside and so much room to They're good, but they got so much room to improve to become even better, and I really like their acts. And I was actually disappointed they lost, but, uh, but you know, they'll, they'll still be around, I mean, like I say, this this is a great match. I really I really enjoyed it. Yes, Deanna Peraza is going to be one of the big names on the indie scene. If she doesn't get signed by WWE sooner than later, she is doing everything the right way, working all over the place. Fantastic worker, has a great look, and nothing negative you could say about her. Man, she just keeps getting better and better. And like you said, Madison Rain, longtime veteran that's been around and. Obviously, you really like Charlie Evans and Jessica Troy, man, as you like to put them over. And two good young women <laughs> in a good match, according to Ed in San Antonio. We then had Kellyanne in from Australia. She defeated Kira Hogan, Ivelisse, Britt Baker, and Shotzi Blackheart, and Samantha Heights in a six-way with a backpack stunner and Samantha Heights. Yeah, this is a really, really fun match. I mean, uh, they always have one of these on the Shimmer taping, so they get a lot of girls in there. And Shotzi looked good. And, uh, it, it, you know, it was just uh, Samantha looked really good. And they all took dives out of the ring. And everyone got a chance to shine. And uh, Kate, uh, Kellyanne, I, 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 she's one of my favorites. She's you know, every time I go to Shimmer or see one of Lance's girls, I always I'll text him a pic and uh, um, I'll trade texts with him. And I was doing that the whole weekend. Uh, actually, not as much as normal, just but but still, I was I was still doing it. And I even told him, I go, I think Kellyanne is the best of your girls. I mean, he's got a lot of girls, and in my mind, she is. She just knows how to put a match together and and keep it keep people into it, like keep everyone excited and. Uh, she was really good, and she got the win. And like I say, this is a really fun match. Everybody got a chance to shine, and uh, yeah, it was great. And like I say, I love uh, Samantha Heights is, was really good. Shotzi was really good, and Kellyanne was was awesome. Excellent. We didn't have Soraya Knight on the Shimmer Tape and defeating Marty Bell with a rocking horse submission. Yeah, this was fun. I mean, anytime Soraya Knight beats the shit out of somebody, it's fun. Uh, Marty actually got a lot of offense too, uh, and and Marty was Marty's got a lot of charisma. I mean, she's uh, I think that's her strong point. Uh, you know, she's a good wrestler. She's not like upper echelons, but she does have the charisma, the charisma to hang with the top people. And uh, basically, she got I'll say it. She got kicked in the cunt a bunch of times because that's what a Soraya's main offensive weapons is to kick people to low and uh, she does that very happily and to the delight of everybody in the crowd and she, and Soraya got the, got the win and it was it was fun just anytime you, I get to see Soraya it's fun you heard it she got kicked in the cunt man it doesn't get more descriptive than that <laughs> 
Tessa Blanchard with Vanessa Craven in her corner, the reigning Shimmer Tag Team champion. Tessa Blanchard defeated Candice LeRae via top rope code breaker. Lots of rumors going around by your close personal friend Dave Meltzer that this would be Tessa Blanchard's last Shimmer weekend and that she is on her way to NXT. Well, if you... From what you see of the weekend, you kind of get that. By the, by the end, you kind of got that opinion. And uh, Tess is awesome. I mean, she's got such a great look. Uh, she's she's a beautiful woman. She's some people don't think she can work, but I don't know what the hell they're talking about because I think she's a great, a, a really good worker. And uh, she's not as good a worker as her dad, but very few are. But I think she has way more charisma than her dad ever had. <laughs> you know what yeah. I mean? It's, it's as crazy as that sounds. I, I highly believe that. And uh, Candice, you know, Candice is one of the most solid women's on the independent. You know, they were both at the Mae Young Classic. Candice, you know, one of the most over women, can do so much stuff. And they had a really good match. And, uh, you know, Tessa and Vanessa were arguing with each other throughout the match, continuing what's been like a four, five, six tape storyline where you're just waiting for them to break up, but it just doesn't happen. But you know they they were they were they were arguing here. Tessa, you know, they're not the tag team champions. Tessa Blanchard's the tag team champion according to her. So really good fun match. I highly enjoyed it. <laughs> yes, Tessa Blanchard has always had the charisma, and uh, her wrestling has continued to get better. Now I think she's very solid, and. She, do it. She has that charisma that she she carries herself like a star. And the knock on her has always been attitude. And uh, she's definitely got the big league, major league look and the star factor. So we'll see how she does in NXT, man. It seems like her and her boyfriend are both NXT bound. So congratulations to both of them. And she definitely deserves the shot. And she's definitely good enough for the opportunity as well. Surprising that she got the win here at the Scissor last weekend, though. Yeah. Well, the the thing with, like, Tessa and her attitude, and I really haven't ever really spoken to her like I have with, like, a lot of other girls, so I really don't know. But she's her daughter's – she's her her father's daughter. And a lot of people didn't like Telly Blanchard because he had an attitude. And I think a lot of these wrestlers, to get as good as they are, they have to have this attitude. That's going to rub people the wrong way. And like I say, she just takes after her dad. So, you know what I mean? It's, it's, she she probably does have an attitude, but in a way it probably helps her in some ways where it's, it is a negative in, in other ways as far as getting along with your fellow wrestlers or whatever. But you know what I mean? She's She's got a lot of upside. I mean, I think she's, you know, she's better than Charlotte. You know what I mean? They, you know, I think their work rate's about the same, but she's got way more charisma than Charlotte. I think they'd be a great team, you know, if they got together like the dads. And uh, I see big, big things for Tessa. Uh, but, it's, you know, having an attitude can hurt in certain ways. You know, some wrestlers, you know, you, you if you show that attitude too soon, it could really hurt you, your career. So we'll, we'll see what happens. But I, I, I think she, she, just on charisma alone, has a big chance to make it. Definitely. I don't I, I disagree with it. I don't think she's as good as an in ring performer as Charlotte, but she does have more charisma than Charlotte for sure. And uh sometimes you need that chip on your shoulder. That's what makes you a superstar to begin with, you know? But uh yeah. we'll see how she does. And a lot of rumors was it was a test making her job in the first round of the May Young Classic that apparently she failed that test. As she was not very happy about that. But that's all rumor and innuendo, as Bruce Pritchard would say. But we'll see what happens if she is indeed on her way to Shimmer. The way this weekend will play out certainly seems like she's on her way out of Shimmer and on her way to NXT. We'll find out soon enough. But she gets the victory over Candice LeRae here. Yeah. One of your personal favorites, Mia Yim, defeated Ao Kazuki via package pile driver. Um, I, 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 if I try to say her real name, I'm just going to embarrass myself. So her nickname is the Happy Maker. So I will refer to her as the Happy Maker. 
and she's uh kind of tiny. She's 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 uh very pretty. You know me. I like I like the Asian women. That's one of the reasons me am is my favorite. Besides the fact that she's, in my opinion, one of the best wrestlers in the world. But uh, uh, Happy Maker comes out, and you remember Randy Savage's old robes in the WWE, where it almost looked like he had wings, kind of. She had yeah. something like that, and it was real fancy. So she looked like a hummingbird. She looked like a giant hummingbird. And uh, she tried to do like a backflip over the top rope, but kind of screwed it up the first time, so it took her a second time. But she made it like out to be like real funny, and no one like kind of held it against her or whatever. And then they were, you know, from the Japanese, the Joshi come, people throw streamers. So they threw streamers, and she used her 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 cape thing because it had sticks that she was holding to catch the streamers and then started spinning the streamers around. And it was like those, uh, those fancy gymnasts in the Olympics that have the streamers. She was like doing that. And that was, she actually put on a, a nice little show doing that on one of the matches. And, uh, yeah, her and Mia Yim, I guess it's a running gag that she gets to wrestle every Joshi's first, uh, match in shimmer. And, uh, they kept that going. And, uh, a really good match. Mia's awesome. And uh the Happy Maker was really good. She the Happy Maker had some weird gear. Like you know how all women pretty much wear n- nylons, you know, underneath their trunks and yes. and knee pads and, and stuff. So but her nylons went up to her, her her basically her boobs. I mean it went all the way up there. So I never seen I never seen that before. Uh so it was kind of a different look. And uh but she was a hell of she was a really she was Something about, like, these young Japanese women, they just can't stop smiling in the match. And sometimes even when they're being beat on, they're smiling, and she's kind of like that. But uh, she's she lives up to her name. She's the happy maker, and they had a good match, and Mia, Mia got the big win, and uh, I highly enjoyed it. Nice win for Mia Yim. We then had <laughs> tag team action as the team of Solo Darling and Thunder Kitty defeated Lefisto and Hudson Envy when Solo pinned Lefisto after a swinging netbreaker. I'd have to consider this a slight upset. Yeah, yeah, uh, definitely. And also it was revenge because at the last tapings, Lefisto cut off Solo's tail. And uh, mm. I, I believe True. they wanted to set fire. I, I believe they wanted to set fire to the, ta- t- uh, <laughs> to the tail, but they were told no because, you know, fire has a tendency to go into business for itself. <laughs> and, uh, but so it was funny because, so Solo didn't have a tail, but she did have like a little tail stub, like her tail was growing back for the match. So I got a kick out of that. And uh, they they got the upset win, and Solo finally got uh, the pinfall victory on Lefisto and got her revenge for having the tail cut off. And it was a decent match. You know, I like Thunder Kitty. And Solo's one of these girls that's gotten a lot better, too, herself. And uh, yes, she's been you know she used to wrestle like all happy and the fun style, and now she's more, at least in this matches in this feud, she's more serious. And pissed off solo darling is actually fucking awesome, and uh, <laughs> and uh, she's got so much fire and intensity. And I thought I thought she was she was great. And Hudson and Lefisto, I mean, what can you say? They're two of the best. And uh, yeah, this is a really good match. Big win for Solo Darling and Thunder Kid again. Revenge! How dare you cut the tail, uh, <laughs> Solo Darling? Man. Jesus Christ, vicious! Moving on, the Lion Doom. Big upset victory, defeating Vanessa Craven via roll up after a miscommunication between Vanessa Craven and her tag team champion partner Tessa Blanchard. They attack the Lion until Leva Bates makes the save. Man, the size difference in this match, the Lion Doom must have came up to Vanessa Craven's waist. Yeah, there's it's a big size difference. <laughs> I mean, Vanessa might I'm 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 like right in the middle of five eleven, six foot, and Vanessa might be taller than me. And uh, she's got size. Like she's not fat, but she's got size. No. She's just this powerhouse, and she's very. I I find her very attractive too. I mean. uh, and and stuff, yeah. and then she's a great worker because she could she she's so awesome at killing people, and stuff. And yeah, uh, yeah this was a real fun match, and Delilah got the big upset, and then you had the more miscommunication and anger between Tessa and Craven, 
And, you know, this sets up a title match for the next show, which they're always good about setting stuff up. Definitely. I'm a big fan of Vanessa Craven, man. i uh known her for over a decade. Like, I remember when she debuted for IWS. We were big fans of that Montreal promotion. So I've always been a big fan of hers, and I've talked to her on Twitter a bit, and she's a really cool chick. I think she's one of the most underrated women's performers in North America. And uh, I'm happy that she is getting a lot more dates in a lot more places because she's one of the girls I definitely, without a shadow of doubt, I thought should have been in the Mae Young Classic and was not. You know, it's one of them girls that I think WWE needs to get her on their radar. But uh, what happened to Shimmer Tag Team Champions with Tessa Blanchard going into this weekend and end up losing here to the Lia Doom? We talked about the seeds being sowed, a whole bunch of seeds being sowed in this match, and what was to come throughout of the weekend. Oh, definitely. We then had the Heart of Shimmer title on the line of Shazza McKenzie defeated against long-time Shimmer regular cheerleader Melissa and defeated cheerleader Melissa via a roll-up to retain her Heart of Shimmer title. Yeah, this is a, a really good match. Like I say, Shaz is one of my favorites. I think she's a great baby face in peril. I don't think I said that right, but you know what I mean. Uh, she her fa- her facials when she's getting the heat, the, they're getting the heat on her are incredible. Uh, Tess is the same way as for, for her for a heel getting the facials when she's getting her ass kicked. I think the two of them just have the best facials in wrestling. Period. I mean, basically, and Shirley and Melissa. I mean, one of the pioneers, one of the OG's a shimmer, and uh, she's always been good, and she's like the ice queen, you know what I mean? She doesn't hardly say anything. She just comes out and has that charisma that, yeah, I'm a badass, and I'm going to kick your ass, and uh, awesome look, and they had a really good, solid match, and it, it was, I enjoyed it. It was good. And nice big win for Shaza McKenzie retaining the title. We didn't have Hikura Shida defeating Nicole Savoy via a shining wizard. And post-match, the two shook hands, and Asia Khan came out to break it up and push Savoy out of the ring. A lot more seeds being sowed for what was to come this weekend for sure here. Yeah, and this was a really, really good match. You know, Savoy can go, and Sheeta is one of the best. Uh, I think she's up there with Osha Ryan and Hojo. You know, I think she's just as good as those those girls. And uh, great look. She looks like she comes out looking like a samurai. And I, I love Sheeta. She's awesome. And they had this really, really good match. And after the match, you know, uh, Sheeta gets up and she wants to shake Nicole's hand. And Nicole's a little hesitant at first. And then she shakes her hand. And, and then they start hugging. And, and they're having, like, a nice little friendly moment. And then that's when Aja Kong comes in. And she didn't... She just didn't pull Savoy away. She treated Savoy like a child, basically. Like, when you want to drag your kid home when he's acting up or doesn't want to listen to you, she she treated Savoy like a kid. And Savoy was kind of like her reaction. Like, she didn't do anything, but you could tell she's like, this is fucking bullshit. You know what I mean? And uh, like I say, the, the seeds have, have sprouted their roots, and the plant was growing. <laughs> And this is a big win for Sheeta because I don't think uh, this spoils it to anybody saying Savoy ends up as champion by the end of the weekend. So this victory over Savoy should theoretically make her one of the top contenders for a future Shimmer title shot when they yeah, that is have true. their next tape yeah. next year. Yeah. And in the main event of the first tape, Mercedes Martinez defeated the Shimmer title against Jessica Havoc and retained the title defeating Havoc with a fisherman's suplex to end the first tapings. Or the first yeah, this, is, first this tapings. is a this is a real good match. Uh, you know, I think Mia Yim's one of the best, but I think since Mercedes has come back, I think she she is the best overall. Uh, plus, she could cut a better promo than Mia. Uh, so I, I give Mercedes the edge as the best North American woman, uh, just slightly. But, you know, she she's so good. I mean, everything she does looks perfect. Havoc is looking great. She's keeping the weight off, so she's really being able to 
be the old havoc that really impressed people at the beginning and it could really move and yeah. it was nice to see Nevea come out with her. Uh she had this big giant brace and a, and a crutch, but it was good to see her get to come out and make a little money because she's probably been laid out since the last Shimmer Tape where she got injured, like, basically four feet in front of me. I saw the whole thing, and then had to, I could hear everything she was saying and when she was, you know, hurt and crying getting out of the ring. So it was good to see her. She got to come out and make some merch money and stuff and, and be uh, out there. So good, good for Nevaeh, and this is a real, this was a good match. And uh, and Mercedes retained. And we talked about Tessa Blanchard earlier. I kind of wonder if this is possibly Mercedes Martinez' last Shimmer weekend, as she's very much been a regular on NXT and ended up dropping the title this weekend. I wonder if she's going to be signing with WWE if she hasn't already. Well, she did make a comment when I was right next to her at the intermission of the second day. And the comment was, this is, she, she was talking to somebody, and she's like, yeah, this is a, your last chance to buy merch. Now, she could have just meant that she wasn't coming out after the show. And you know how some of them sell merch after the show. Now, it could have been right. that. I mean, I'm, you know, I have no insider information on this. I've talked to her very briefly, but I don't know her like I know Savoy and Bia and so and so. So she did make that comment, so take that ha- as you will. But uh, it'd be good good for her if if she is NXT bound because she deserves it. I mean, she's one of the OGs, one Absolutely. of the pioneers, and she's she's damn good. You know what I mean? And obviously made it all the way to the fi- semifinals of the May Young Classic, so... They respect her very much and are very aware of her, and they've been using her regularly since. So, interesting. That was the first thing I thought when she dropped the belt this week. And, hmm, I wonder if she's signing with WWE. She certainly deserves it. And yeah. if nothing else, oh, she should certainly be one of the coaches down there, if not one of the talents, for sure. Yeah. But so, that takes us to the second show of the first night. Shimmer Volume 97 opened up with Ayo Kazuki. The feeding old Vader Scott. Yeah, this this is a fun match. Vader, uh, you know, she gets a lot of heat, and she had this like new jacket, and she was just so proud of her jacket. It was so funny. She's like, "Isn't my jacket beautiful?" And this and that, and it's like, not really, but okay. <laughs> but uh, you know, Vader, <laughs> she's she's fun she you know she always has a fun match and she's got a lot of charisma and stuff and i thought the two of them worked well and they had a, a good match and uh the happy maker got the win veda scott now dating speedball mike bailey the uh aforementioned awesome worker band from the usa right now dude <laughs> that shitty board bullshit. <laughs> yeah i mean that's gotta Moving be tough up. i mean like, she seems really happy, but it, basically she's got to go to Europe to see the dude. So well, she can go. You know, ho- I don't know. Obviously, all holidays are at Speedball House and not Vedas. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't know how long he's banned for, but hopefully it's not forever because you know what I mean. That's no. tough. You got to take like a twelve-hour flight just to see your boyfriend every so often. I mean. You know, so best best um, of luck to them. That's all I can say. Well, Speedball's from Canada, so I mean, she's oh from okay, my bad. Providence, so it's not it's not like that bad. I mean, you know, she goes sees them in Canada a lot. They did go to Europe together because he's been working over there a lot since he can't get in the United States. Luckily for him, he's a hot commodity in other parts of the con- uh, the the world. So. uh Things are still going good for him, even though he can't get into the States. But, uh, yeah, okay, happy, yeah lucky for them, I hope. They make a cute couple. Yeah, I mean, it's a lot. I, like I say, I, th- I thought he was an English guy. I haven't, you know, I don't watch a lot of men's in the Canadian act. So yeah, I, Montreal. Yeah. Yeah, so I guess that's better. I mean, it's a little easier. So, Payton, yeah, has the all holidays are at speedball. <laughs> yeah. Paradise <laughs> Lost, Rosemary and Angel Dust, they're now just known as Dust here, or apparently has changed her name to Zoe Star, if you look on uh, her Twitter machine. Defeated the Sinister Sweethearts of Samantha Heights and Brittany Blake when Dust hits a double stomp onto Blake. 
I like all four girls. I'm assuming this was a good match. Oh yeah, this was an awesome match. One of my favorite spots of the of the weekend was in this match, and that is Samantha and Blake do basically a spot where Samantha picks up Blake in the electric chair position, basically, and then I guess it's like a you know they do a double team. So they were getting the heat on Rosemary, and Rosemary does the thing where like she's bent at the knees, but she's like laying backwards, like like she's dead, and then she does like the Undertaker cane thing, and so she's laying there back with her on her back, like she's dead. So Samantha picks up Blake for the uh, for the move, and right when they get ready to do the move, that's when Rosemary does the Undertaker and comes back to life and you know screams, and Brittany and Samantha, both of them fucking just got scared out of their minds and freaked out, and basically Samantha just fell backwards, and poor Brittany took the electric chair uh, in in the match. I thought that, I mean, I laughed my ass off. I thought it was so well-timed and worked, and it just looked so cool, and really good match, and Samantha and Blake got a lot of chance to shine, and uh, Samantha's also got, like, she's really good at, like, cheering, like, her partner on and, and talking during the match, and, uh, this is one of my favorites. I, I won't say it was, you know, maybe one of the best worked, but it was really, really good. Uh, but it wasn't, you know, to the level of a few of the matches. But as far as entertaining me, I was highly entertained. And I thought it was great. And, I, I, yeah, it was awesome. We then had Britt Baker defeat Zoe Lucas via Roaring Elbow. Yeah, this was uh, this is good. Britt Baker, uh, she, she has such a great look. And uh, I got to talk to her at one of the intermissions because I'm getting a wisdom teeth pulled out, so I had to ask her how long and how bad the pain was going to be and stuff. And I'm sure she gets annoyed if fucking Mark's asking her fucking dental questions <laughs> at shows, but I could I could help it. I could help it. But uh, yeah, this is a this is a this is a good match. And uh, and uh, her opponent was like I say, she was having a really good uh, overall weekend and. Uh, yeah, this is this is this is good. You didn't have to go ask Britt Baker. I could have told you about wisdom teeth, man. Whether you get them pulled out awake or asleep, no big deal, man. Not a problem at all. Trust Doctor Tom Richards. Not a problem. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah, true. I've gotten three of them pulled out. So two awake, one asleep. No big deal, man. Britt Baker, big victory uh, over Zoe. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Candice LeRae then rebounded off for a loss off of Volume 96 by defeating Charlie Evans via Mr. Toad's Wild Rye here on Volume 97. Oh. Going back to Zoe, she did make a comment that, you know, she hates America, but she hates made up places even more, like Britsville. Because <laughs> they introduced Br- Brit Baker for Britsville, so that, that was actually pretty funny. And yeah, Candice uh, got, got the win. Uh, against my girl uh, Charlie Evans, and uh, heart- heartbroken that Charlie got the loss, but really good match and uh, really really enjoyable. And I'm I'm glad Charlie's getting better every time I see her. We didn't had Hiro Matsumoto defeat Hudson Envy via Saito Suplex. Nice opportunity for Hudson Envy to work with Matsumoto in a losing effort. Yeah, they're 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 buddies apparently, and uh, there was a spot in the match where Matsumoto gives uh, Hudson a, a suplex, and I swear to God, it looked like she dropped her right on her head and killed her. And uh, <laughs> one of I mean, like one of those like oh shit, kind of scary things. But Hudson was alright. Talking to Hudson later, she it didn't it it just looked that way. She said that she didn't feel a thing. That it just looked that way, and. Uh, I'm glad because, like I say, that was a devastating-looking uh, move. But uh, this this was a real hard. You know, some of the best matches are when you're friend, you, when you're wrestling your friends, and uh, so they had no problem hitting each other hard and beating the crap out of each other, and they had one awesome match. Cheerleader Melissa then defeated Chelsea Green, making her first appearance of the weekend via air raid crash. This was a this was a really really good match. Chelsea's gotten a lot better over the last couple of years. I mean, she, she like I say, she she's improving big time. She has such a great look. 
she must she must like ne- probably never eaten a carb in her life because it's amazing how skinny she is. <laughs> Uh, you know, I could never do that. I could never be like that or anywhere close. <laughs> but uh, they had a, a great match, and Melissa got the win. And, uh, yeah, it was good. Zack Ryder's a very lucky man right now, I must say. <laughs> All right. Moving on, Nicole Savoy defeated Soraya Knight via armbar. This, I would assume, would be a really good match between these two. This was this is another example of Soraya doing something for someone else because this match because everybody's chanting number three at Savoy, you know what I mean? So to to get her heat and she's acting like she's she's pissed off about it and they're having this match and Soraya is taking the majority of the match and when she's in charge she's just beating them. Wait, I mean give up and. She'd take an ass kicking and then she'd get up and she'd yell, I'm not afraid of you, and kind of like shoot the fingers at her and then she'd get her ass kicked some more and she got she got kicked low a lot of times and she just kept fighting back and she uh, once again did the thing where I'm, I'm not, she gets up all dramatically from her beating and she's like, I'm not afraid of you and Soraya keeps kicking her ass and then Savoy just is able to get uh, lock in a submission and gets the tap out from Soraya. And, uh, you know, which was kind of, a, like I say, she was getting her ass kicked the whole time, but she gets the win, which is, a, it's a big win because it's Soraya. And then Soraya gets up and she's able to get up quicker than Savoy because, like I say, she's ass. And she puts out her hand. And once again, Savoy, you know, she doesn't do it real fast. She kind of hesitates, but she shakes her hand and Soraya fucking bows to her and gives her like a nod like a big-time nod that to put her over. And people were like, now not everyone's cheering number three. Now people were actually kind of getting behind Nicole. And uh, it was a big step in the babyface turn. So the roots are now busting through the ground and, and the plant starting to grow. <laughs> yeah, a big win for Nicole Savoy here on the second show. We then had the Shimmer Tag Team titles on the line as Mount Tessa of Vanessa Craven and Tessa Blanchard defeated, defended the titles against Leva Bates and Belia Doom. And we have new Shimmer Tag Team champions as Tessa Blanchard accidentally hit Craven with a code breaker and then Leva hit her with a Pepsi plunge. And we got new tag team champions. Post match, Vanessa Craven vowed to get revenge on Tessa Blanchard tomorrow. Yeah, this was, I can eat. Well, you know how big of a fan and friend I am, Oliva. So, yes, I was ecstatic because I wasn't expecting it because so many times I've expected Tessa and Vanessa to lose, but they haven't. And I just was like, I don't think Leva and, and Delilah are established enough to win, but. To my surprise, they did get the big win, and I lost my damn mind. And uh, and then uh, Vanessa, you know, Tessa just starts berating Craven and just talking so much shit to her, and everyone's like, you know, fucking hit the bitch. So finally, Craven just pie-faced Tessa and got her to the ground, and then she says that tomorrow she's going to fucking kick her ass finally. And everybody was super happy and excited for that. Yeah, because they've been building this thing up for a long, long time of Vanessa and Tessa losing the belts and eventually breaking up and feuding. And apparently with Tessa Blanchard going to NXT, they're going to have to do it all in one weekend. But uh, it's been a long time coming, so it finally happened, and I'm sure that got a great reaction from everybody. Oh, we didn't yeah, yeah. everybody Chicago. was ready for it. We then had Shaza McKenzie make her second hardest shimmer title defense of the weekend as she defended against Kelly Ann and retained the title via armbar camel clutch. This was this was funny though because I guess there's there were like three women who were in the audience and for whatever reason I guess they were jealous because Shaz is so much prettier than they were because they were three ugly <laughs> hags, but 
they they were talking shit to Shazza and started yelling boring before the match even started and just they hated Shazza for whatever reason, which made me hate them. <laughs> but uh, you know, I'm a big fan of Kellyanne and the two of them are friends, so that once again they had no trouble beating the crap out of each other. And this was this is one of my top five matches of the weekend. I really, really enjoyed it. It was really good. And Chaza did like the, the split leg stunner from like the second rope. So that looked pretty impressive and then she got the uh the the submission and yeah, this this was awesome. So there you go. When this comes out on DVD in three years, Shaza McKenzie against Kelly Ann. One of the matches you definitely want to check out, according to Ed in San Antonio. Yeah. Well, hopefully Moving on. Three years, but. <laughs> I hear you, but they don't seem to be getting caught up any bit on these DVDs getting them out, though. Mia Yim took on Asia Kong. And Asia Kong ends up getting the victory with a spinning back fist brain buster combination. This was my dream match coming into the show. So when they announced it, I I lost my mind. I was so excited. But at the same time, scared for Mia that she may die during this match. And uh, they had this. This was the, without a doubt, without a doubt, this is the best match of the weekend. Uh, It starts off where Kong is like no selling pretty much everything Mia does and just beats Mia, beats her up, and then Mia finally makes comebacks. And then then Kong started bumping for her, and it got back and forth, and and Kong even took a fucking massive fucking German suplex from Mia. And uh, like I say, Kong had her working shoes on, and they had an awesome match. And then finally Kong got the back fist and the win, and... When when uh, when Mia was leaving, because this is a big deal for her. This is like one of her dream matches, and uh, you could see her wiping the tears from her eyes as she was leaving the ring. She was just so happy that she had this opportunity to face Kong, and it, it was it almost brought tears to my eyes seeing that. And uh, and I'm so happy she didn't die, and that's the main thing. But uh, yeah, it was fucking awesome. Best best thing on the on the weekend by far. Awesome, man. Cool for me and that you got the work. A legend like Aja Kong this weekend at Shimmer. Aja Kong victorious, though. And in the main event of Shimmer 97, Mercedes Martinez put the Shimmer Championship on the line against Akeru Shida and retained the title via submission. After the match, Aja Khan helped Mercedes Martinez attacked Sheeta and beat her down until Nicole Savoy came out. And she got beaten down as Asia Kong and Mercedes Martinez turned on her and stood tall to end the evening. Well, what 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 actually happened is uh, Savoy came out with Martinez. And before the match, Martinez was like, are we good? And she's like, we're good, but I'm still pissed, kind of. And uh, But they're, they're getting along. But throughout the match... Mercedes just gets angry with Savoy and starts yelling at her. And then she starts viciously working over the knee of Sheeta, like smashing against the turnbuckle. And she keeps wanting Savoy to interfere while she's got the back, the referee's back turned. But Savoy doesn't want to interfere because she's, she makes a mention, I've, I've had a knee injury. I don't want, you know, I don't want her to be out for so long. And it's throughout the match. She just, Mercedes just keeps attacking the knee viciously and wants Savoy to, to help her, but Savoy just stands her ground. Like, she looks like she's about to, but she just she can't bring herself to do it. So finally, Mercedes gets to win, and Asia Kong comes out, and then the two of them start beating up on Sheeta, and then they want, they want Savoy to come in the ring and bring a chair, and they want her to just destroy the knee for good. So Savoy comes in with the chair, and she's looking at the chair, and she's like, very hesitant, and they're screaming and yelling at her to fucking hit her. And then finally, she just whacks Mercedes with a chair. She whacks Aja Kong. She did give Aja Kong the lightest chair shot since that landstorm chair shot on the first ECW pay per view. <laughs> uh, but uh, and I, I don't blame her. And uh, and then they beat her down. So then then you have the the main event for the next taping set up for a tag team match between the four. And like I say, they're building the seeds to the to the finale. Yes. And that ended night one of the Shimmer tapings. Moving on to Sunday night 
two or day two. Shimmer 98 opened with three pre-show matches. First one seen Jules Malone and High End defeat Cherry Lane and Trixie Tash via Fireman's Carry Stunner from Jules on to Trixie. Uh, I got there right at the finish of the match, so I I don't know. I really can't say too much about it. All right. We didn't have Heather Monroe defeat Kylie Ray in another pre-show match. Yeah, this is really good. This is a really good match. Both of them got to shine, and like I say, they both have a lot of potential. Absolutely. And finally, in the third pre-show match, Tessa Blanchard. Surprised to see a former tag team champion in a pre-show match, though. She worked Indy Hartwell and got the victory with a diving codebreaker. Yeah, it was kind of a shock to see Tessa come out for that. Nobody knew what the hell was going on, and somebody even told her, hey, Vin- hey Tessa, how does it feel to be devoted to Rise? And that's what started cussing to do yeah. that. But uh, apparently the two of them are very good friends, and I guess Tessa was more than happy to, to wrestle her friend. And uh, they had a good match. Hartwell's got a lot of potential, a good look, and uh, Tessa got the win. And, and yeah, it was, it was like, like I say, it was a surprise. We didn't open the official show with Jessica Havoc as she took on Zoe Lucas and got the victory via a running powerbomb. Yeah, yeah. But like I say, Zoe Lucas was just, she was having a great shimmer weekend. I mean, her promos were awesome. Her matches were good. And like this, they did the same thing with uh, Nixon Noel. Or I always, I always forget which comes first, Nixon or Noel. But, you know, Nixon, she lost the majority of her first matches, and they're doing the same thing with uh, Zoe, where she's losing. And I guess her next trip back, she'll finally start to get some wins. But, yeah, so much potential there. We then had the Blue Nation, Charlie Evans and Jessica Troy, got a big victory defeating Solo Darling and Thunder Kitty. Yeah, you know, after after uh, Solo and Kitty got the the win over Hudson and and, and Lafisa, you, you you would think they were getting like the big push, but the Blue Nation got the win, and I guess that'll set something up in the near future between them and uh, totally tubular tag team champions. We then seen cheerleader Melissa take on Rachel Ellering, and cheerleader Melissa got the win with an air raid crash. Yeah, this is another very good match, very well-worked match. You know, Chilliter was good. Rachel hung with her the whole way. Rachel got a lot of shine. And uh, Rachel got over. She got over over the weekend, so good for her. Definitely good to hear for Rachel Ellering. Speaking of totally tubular tag team champions, the Laya Doom and Leva Bates made their first title defense as they defended the titles against the hottest free agents, Madison Rain and Deanna Perrazzo, but it was the tag team champions that were victorious, retaining their titles <laughs> via Glory Bomb Super Kick Combo. And they hang on to their titles with their first successful title defense. Yeah, they came out as Bill and Ted from Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure, and uh, <laughs> that was pretty funny. Uh, but, uh, yeah, really good match, uh, very well-worked uh, match, and, and Delilah and, and Leva kept the titles, and you know how I feel about Leva, so I was extremely happy about it. So, yeah, awesome. We then had Eli Kazuki defeat Chelsea Green in singles competition. Yeah, this is the happy maker. She, uh, I don't know if it was this match or in the next – yeah, I think it was this match – there's like those lightning rigs that are above the sides of the ring. And this time when they threw the streamers, some of them threw them high. So the streamers went through the lightning gear. So Happy Maker started doing the spinning thing with the streamers. And the cameramen and, and, and people underneath were freaking out because they thought that might cause the lightning gear thing to fall down. But luckily they were able to break <laughs> those streamers and it didn't. Have, there was no disaster because they would have fell like almost on me if they would have fell down. But... <laughs> but a real, real good match, and uh, yeah, this is very entertaining. And uh, Happy Maker is awesome, che- and Chelsea looked great too. Happy Maker with the win. Soraya Knight got a victory as she defeated Ivalice via a rocking horse submission. Okay, I. 
well, it's it's hard to tell with Soraya because she's so awesome, but it looked like this match was getting out of hand, but it could have just been that they decided to beat the shit out of each other, but Eva Lee starts with the <laughs> advantage, and she she knocks Soraya out of the ring, and then she goes for, like, a drop kick out of the ring, and then while she's on the apron, Soraya just grabs her by the hair, and there's a little distance between the ring and the, and the railing. Not a lot, but a little distance. And she grabbed her from the ring by the hair, by both hands, and flung her by the hair head first into the railing and proceeded to beat the shit out of Ivelisse. And Ivelisse would fight back. And, and she'd beat the shit out of Soraya. And they fought all around the ring, the, uh, uh, the, the, you know, the seats, and by the bar, and they were smashing each other into the wall. And finally, they made their way back to the ring and uh, beat the shit out of each other some more. And then Soraya got the submission win. And then after the match, she walked over to Ivelisse, put her hand out, shook her, and then gave her the nod. And because uh, a lot of people, you could tell that there were people who, you know, they, they're on Twitter, or they know things, and they don't, a lot of people don't like Ivelisse for stuff that happens outside of the ring because she's a, incredible performer. I've always thought she's great, but yes. has attitude and, and not very well liked, and a lot of the fans know that. So, it, in, a, in a way, Soraya put her over, or it was kind of a thing to like, you know, hey, she took an ass kicking, and uh, she she she's earned my respect, and I hope you people respect her too, kind of a thing. And uh, I thought it was a really good thing for Ivelisse, because, like I say, there are, there are people who don't like Ivelisse for like I say, stuff outside of the ring mm-hmm. and stuff. Will be a very interesting match to see when this DVD comes out, like I said, in three years. But Saraya Knight gets the victory with the Rocking Horse submission. We didn't have your multi-woman match of the day, as it was Dust, Candice LeRae, Shotzi Blackheart, and Veda Scott getting it on. And Veda Scott got yet another win this weekend when she got the victory on Shotzi Blackheart. Yeah, a surprising win for uh, for Veda. And uh but it was a really good match. Everyone got to shine and do stuff and you know, these matches in Shimmer are always fun. Mia Yamu's had a very good weekend. Took on Rose Mary one on one and got the victory via package pile driver. Yeah, this will be my number two match of the weekend. And it was great seeing it because they had that great feud in TNA. And unfortunately, Mia left TNA before she could ever get her big win back because she was putting over Rosemary left and right in all the matches. So it was good to finally get some closure to that, even though it was a different promotion. But uh, she blocked the miss twice. And then she had drank somebody's water outside the ring. And before she hit, like, her big move, she she spit the water into Rosemary's face. So it was uh, – Rosemary got her and you know. I, I just fucking blew that word. But she, she got her payback. And uh, it was awesome. And it was a great match. The two of them have great chemistry. And Blue won this uh, this battle in the war between Red versus Blue. It was And it was awesome. Rosemary is one of those characters that drives me nuts. I think she is a money player on the women's division, but needs to be protected like an undertaker, and she just does way too many jobs here in Shimmer, in my opinion. Does another one here for me, A.M. I'm sure this was a great match, and I'll be interested to see it when, uh, you know, a long time from now, when it comes out on DVD, as I keep saying. But me and A.M. with the big victory uh, via package pile driver. We then had Hiro Matsumoto go one on one with Kelly Ann, and Kelly Ann gets the big upset victory. Yeah, and and Matsumoto, she's got so much charisma, and uh, she's so hilarious. You know, every time she says something like she like Kelly Ann would threaten to grab the mask, and she'd be screaming, "Don't touch, no touch!" And then Kelly Ann actually put the the mask on and wrestled part of the match with the mask on, and then finally Matsumoto got it back, and she take it to the corner, and she's all, "You stay here," and they had they had an awesome match, and Kelly win Kelly Kelly Ann got the awesome you know the the upset victory in my opinion, and it was awesome, and Kelly Ann had a great great weekend too. She had an awesome weekend, and yeah, great fun match. I I highly enjoyed it. 
Excellent. And a nice big win for Kellyanne. We didn't had the battle of the former tag team champions, but it doesn't actually happen as it was scheduled to be Tessa Blanchard versus Vanessa Craven. Tessa says she doesn't need any of this and walks out getting herself counted out. But she grabs a mic and tells Craven that she o- that she's only special because Tessa did everything. As she tries to leave, fire and nice stop her. Craven challenges Blanchard to a Lumberjills match, so Tessa cannot run away, and that will be on the next volume coming up later in the evening. Yeah, yeah, they really, like, because the match only lasted, like, a minute or two, so they got you wanting to see her kill her, but they were making you wait for it. <laughs> like a good booker does. Yeah. We didn't have the heart of Shimmer title on the line when Shaza McKenzie defended the title against Allison K. This one ended up with Allison K getting busted open was pouring blood everywhere and they had to stop the match due to the blood. Yeah, it was uh they were outside and I think Shazza did like maybe Hearn Karan or something, so Allison went into the to the side of the ring and I'm not exactly sure what cut her or like if she hit the wood or maybe there's a piece of metal or Something, but it cut her good. I mean, she was she was uh, pouring blood out, and uh, I guess she knew how much blood was coming out. So when she got in the ring, she's acting like she's out of it, kind of. You know what I mean? Like can barely stand. Right. She still wants to fight, but the referee's seeing all this blood, and he's like, no, no, no. And he run, he jumped out of the ring, ran to the back, and got uh, Lexi Fife. Hmm. And so Fife comes out and tells her, no, 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 and and Shaz is there, like, you could tell she felt bad about it, and she, she didn't like how, you know, the, the match was ending or whatever, so they just stopped the match. And uh, so, uh, and, and uh, Allison was fine. It was, it was just a cut. She was just selling the, the cut, you know what I mean? Because that's what you're supposed to do. Right. But it just looked so bad that, you know, they were like, no. And, and she was smart about it because she did not wipe the blood off. So when the intermission time came, she was covered in blood, so a lot of people wanted to take a photo with a bloody Allison K, myself included. So, you know what I mean? It sucked that the match didn't happen, but, you know, at least she you, she used it to her advantage as far as, you know, taking photos and selling gimmicks and stuff. And if you go to Ed's Facebook page, he has an awesome selfie with Allison K post show all wrapped up with blood still all over her face. <laughs> yeah. And that brought us to the main event of the evening tag team competition as it was Mercedes Martinez in Asia Kong taking on Nicole Savoy in Hikaru Shida and Mercedes and Asia Kong end up getting the victory after Asia Kong hit both of the women with a metal box. Post-match, Lexi Fife came out, being the voice of reason, and tells Andy Long he's the worst ref in history, and lets Mercedes know she will defend the Shimmer title against Savoy in the main <laughs> event of the evening's Volume 99. Yeah, this is this is a really, really well-worked match. Like, they, they targeted Cheetah's knee, and were like... And Cheetah's selling it incredibly. She's almost crying at times. So what happened is, she gets is thrown out of the ring, and Kong comes with that metal like trash can or whatever it is, and she just smashes the knee, and it makes the loudest sound, and she just starts screaming, and she's in pain. And then when the ref comes out to check on her, when Andy, and Andy who is like the most hated referee in Shimmer for whatever reason, everyone hates his goddamn guts. And uh, so he comes up, he's tending to her. Kong gets in the ring, she smashes the boy twice with the can. And then they get the win. And then Lexi came out, and she's kind of arguing it. But then Andy still raises her hand, and that's when when like when Fife got in the ring and said, "You're the worst referee ever." And that got like one of the biggest pops of the whole weekend. Everyone was just so <laughs> excited. She said that, so she set up the main event for the next show, and then off we go. Off we go. It's funny. I've uh. Never spoken to Andy Long in my life, but I've never really been a fan of his. 
And when I was hanging out at that Shimmer a couple weeks ago, and he walks out, and the entire building starts booing him out of the ring, I started just laughing to myself. I thought it was funny. I was like, I don't even like this guy, and they're booing him out of the ring. That's funny to me. <laughs> but, yes, they hate Andy Long and Shimmer for whatever reason. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. It's funny, though. So uh, we got the last the last tapings to do. Uh, we probably just got about nine minutes of live airfare, but uh, the the blog talk continues to tape. So if we cut out, if you're listening live, and I'm sure not, there's not a whole lot because most people listen to our our downloads. But if you're listening live and the show cuts out, it's just because we ran out of time. But you can download the show later and you can finish hearing what we're going to say because we're probably going to go about five ten minutes past the time. And you're definitely going to want to download because Ed's definitely going to have some stories after we finish results that only Ed would have. So you definitely don't want to miss that. It's like a bonus material, damn it. Yep, yep. <laughs> so Shimmer Volume 99 opened up with a bloody Allison K storms the ring demanding a rematch with Shaza McKenzie. Veda Scott comes out and wants the match instead. Shaza accepts Veda's challenge after Allison K is carried back to the locker room. And we opened up with Kansas LeRae defeating Jessica Troy with Mr. Toe's Wild Ride. Well, 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 Allison, I think it, maybe it was a little different, but I think she called Shaza an egg sucking dog. <laughs> egg sucking dog. Or something dog. to that effect. Yeah. And then Veda wanted to, because she got the win, and she said, even though they didn't announce that match as the number one contenders, Veda claimed it was the number one contenders. So Shazza <laughs> wanted to beat her up right there, but Veda jumped out of the ring, and no, this is for later, it's for later. <laughs> and and Cowardly I took don't... off. So that that was funny. But but Allison K, her promo, and it only lasted like a minute, if that, but it, it was an awesome promo, man. It's worth it just to see her call, call her that. And so, so, yeah, that was funny. So, well, then sorry, we what had was the, the next match? match? Candice LeRae defeated Jessica Troy with Mr. Toad's Wild Ride. Oh, this is a good match. You know, like I say, Candice is awesome. And Jessica, she's another one of these girls who's very tiny. Uh, but, she, I, I, I like her look. She's a great partner to Charlie Evans. And, uh... Very, she's very good too. And a uh, back and forth match, you know. I, I, I was surprised it went as long as it did, and she got as much uh, on Candice as she did. But very, very enjoyable match, and they both look good. Shotzi Blackheart finally got on the winning side of things in the last match of the weekend for herself, as she defeated Heather Monroe via the diving senton. Featuring two Cali girls getting it on here in Chicago. Yeah, really good match. Heather Monroe, you know, like I say, she's she really impressed and, 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 and hopefully we'll see more of her. And Shotzi's fucking awesome. And she's such a cool chick. I mean, I love Shotzi. She's she's great and yeah, really fun match. I highly enjoyed it. We then had Lefisto and Hudson Envy teaming up. As they defeated the Sinister Sweethearts of Brittany Blake and Samantha Heights. This is a really good match. Uh, this, the, uh, like I say, Blake and Samantha had a great weekend. And uh, they, this is really good. And Hudson and Lefisto, like, like I say, I mean, they're so good. I mean, they're so solid. And uh, and this this was just a really good back and forth match. And 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 Samantha and, and 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 Blake, even though they lost, it to me that I th- I think they gained, uh, you know, I think they gained something even though they lost. And uh, love to see more more of the two of them teaming and uh, and and stuff. So yeah, this is great. And I'm sure they will be back as a team for sure. A nice victory for Lefisto and Hunting Envy. We didn't have yeah. Deanna Perazzo winning a year. Usual Shimmer multi-woman match as she defeated Kira Hogan, Mia Yim, and Marty Bell in a four-way when she tapped out Kira Hogan with a Fujiara armbar. Yeah, uh, Hogan and 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 Marty were kind of like doing the front of me thing, and they were good at it, but they weren't as good as Karen Q and and Ray Lynn. I, I, I will say that. 
And uh, this was a good, fun match, and Peraza got the win. And uh, uh, after Leva, I mean, after Mia had all those great uh, singles matches, I kind of would have preferred maybe her having another singles match. But uh, you know, she was, it was she, it's still great to see her in there. Maybe she needed a break after all the hard fought battles she had over the weekend. So that's probably why. But uh, yeah, this is fun, and Peraza got the win, and uh, everyone looked good. Kira Hogan, she's something else, man. She's got a great look. She's a beautiful girl. Yes. I like Kira Hogan a lot. I think she's a very good worker for experience level. And uh, one of the girls with a big, big future for sure. We didn't have the Heart of Shimmer Championship match that was set up at the beginning of the show as Shaza McKenzie defended against Veda Scott and retain the tighter, taking out Big Vader Scott herself with a submission. Yeah, this is another good match. Uh, and uh, for- former tag team partners going at it. They used to be a team that the first shimmer I ever went to in New York City on Mania Weekend, they they were teaming. And uh, good match. They both look good. And, you know, like I say, I'm a super big fan of Chaz and McKenzie. And uh, we will be losing our live feed in 90 seconds. But like I say, just get the download and you can hear the rest of it. There you go. We didn't had tag team action as fire and nice of Britt Baker and Chelsea Green get a huge victory over Aoi Kazuki and Hiro Matsumoto when Britt hits the roaring elbow on Kazuki. Yeah, they, uh, I was surprised that the Japanese lost as many matches as they did, because um, um, usually they're they're pretty well protected. But I guess Matsumoto's been there so long, it doesn't matter. She's over regardless. But, okay, so you know how she wears the Godzilla hat, and I've been telling you the other girl's been coming out with, like, a mockingbird cape thing. That looks incredible. Yes. So when they come out, she's got Happy Maker on her shoulders, and she's got the wings. And Happy Maker's wearing the Godzilla mask. So you got this giant thing, like it's like Godzilla and Mothra gave birth to this creature, and it was so awesome. And it was just the entrance was just fantastic. I mean, you got to see it just for the entrance. And a uh, really good match. Uh, Fire and Ice make a great team. They complement each other very well. And... uh very good looking team. They're very easy on the eyes, and uh, they a great match. And they got the big upset win, and the, the team just shook hands before the match and shook hands after the match. So, uh, good sportsmanship between everybody, and yeah, really good. And a nice victory for them, and you know, a great. And both Chelsea Green and Britt Baker are, you know, been in the business less than two years, so. Quite the opportunity for them to get to work with Kazuki and Matsumoto and not only work with them, but get the victory, man. Big, big victory for Fire and Ice. Speaking of Japanese talent, Hikaru Shida took on cheerleader Melissa. Cheerleader Melissa has been winning all weekend with the air raid crash. When she went for it this time, Hikaru Shida was ready and ended up rolling her up and getting the victory. Yeah, this is a great match. They work very well together. And uh, like I say, cheerleader is just, she's great. And she does one of the best. And they had a great match. And she sold the leg throughout the whole match. But she was able to get the to get the win. And we had Shimmer Tag Team Championship on the line as the totally tubular tag team champions of Delia Doom and Oliva Bates defended the titles against Paradise Lost of Rosemary and Dust. And the champions ended up retaining the tag team titles. So that would be one of the matches where a lot of people didn't know what was going to happen because Rosemary and Angel Dust are a regular team and been being pushed heavy in rise. But the Lion Doom and Leva Bates retain the tag team titles and they're still your Shimmer Tag Team Champions. Yeah, and this time they came out. Uh, they came out to the music of "Saved by the Bell," and they were wearing Bayside, uh, the Bayside Tigers, or gear, or or whatever. But that was pretty funny. But they came out Bayside. to the "Saved by the Bell" music, so that, they got a big pop from everybody. And good match, and they, they make a good team. They complement each other well, and it's the same thing with uh, Zoe and and uh, and uh, Rosemary and. Uh, 
yeah, this was a really good match. And uh, I almost want to say, even though they were the champions, it's almost an upset just because Rosemary was in the match. And, uh, yeah, it was good. I highly enjoyed it. I'm, I'm happy that Leva Bates is still, and, and Delilah Doom are still your tag team champions. Yes. Uh, big weekend, like we said, for Delilah Doom, not winning only to rise, but the Shimmer Tag Team titles, man, collecting the gold. This weekend for Delia Doom. From there, Kellyanne took on Jessica Havoc one on one, and what's got to be considered a huge, huge upset. Kellyanne got the victory with a roll up to defeat Jessica Havoc here on Shimmer ninety nine. Yeah, really good match, and like I say, I love Kellyanne. She had a phenomenal weekend. One of the MVPs in my book. And like really will work match and like say Nevaeh was there, she got to come out and uh Kelly Ann is just so entertaining. I mean, if you've never seen her, I, I, I highly recommend you go out of your way to find some Kelly Ann because she just she has something special. Her matches are always exciting and you get into them big time. Whether she's the baby face or the heel. Yes. I'm a big fan of Kellyanne, you know. Happy to see her be a regular here in Shimmer. Have a really good weekend, as uh, she definitely deserves a good worker. It's good to Australia's got some really good women's wrestlers, so it's always good that Shimmer brings some of them in. Unfortunately, we did not have Madison Eagle speaking of Australian wrestlers on this weekend, though. <laughs> but good to see Kellyanne yeah. in a nice victory here for her over Jessica Havoc. Especially like the last time they brought in Kellyanne for the weekend, she had that injury, so she didn't even get to wrestle any of the Shimmer matches. And she lost she yeah. lost money that weekend because she had to change her flight. I remember I donated to her her fun. I just gave her like yeah, I would have gave her more if I would have had it, but it was at the end of the weekend, so I gave her like I was like here here's twenty bucks. I hope it helps. You know what I mean? And uh, uh, so I'm glad that she's had a great weekend after that one was such a disaster for her. Yes. And last I knew, she was dating Adam Brooks, who got the debut for PWG their last weekend of shows last month as well. So good oh, success okay. for both of them out of Australia. Well, I, we I, then I, I had... Got, I, and, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. I'll, I'll talk about it after. Let's say the Lumber Jills match in the battle of former tag team champions... Tessa Blanchard, Vanessa Craven, they've been building this for well over a year. It came to a head here at Shimmer 99, and Vanessa Craven was victorious with the choke bomb. Yeah, this was, I was actually kind of disappointed in the number of Lumberjills because they only came out with four each, and I'm like, that's not enough to fucking be Lumber, you know what I mean, to, to, to do it, but... Basically, every time Tessa got thrown out, uh, the baby face attacked her and beat her up. And every time Craven got thrown out, the uh, heels tried to jump on her and it would cause both sides to fight with each other. So there was a lot of shenanigans throughout the match from everywhere. And then the, it led to a big spot where everybody, Tessa, and all the lumber jills are outside. And Craven climbs the top rope and somehow, some way. And it looked scary as hell because from my angle, it looked like she was short. But Vanessa jumped in the air and did a senton onto the group of women. And like I say, it looked like she was short. So I was like, I just jumped in the air with my hands in the air and just was like hoping she was still alive. But it uh, it actually worked out perfect other than the fact that somehow Rosemary got her ankle twisted and they had to kind of help her to the back after the match. But yes, uh, Craven finally killed Tessa Blanchard. <laughs> and and Tessa actually got a good hand on the way out. People did cheer her on the way out, thinking that by this time they figured, okay, she's probably gone for good. Good to hear. And yes, according to your good personal friend Dave Meltzer, Rosemary was indeed okay afterwards after it was feared that she badly injured her knee. So that is good to hear since Rosemary's just coming back from an elbow injury when uh, sexy star shot on her at Triple Mania, so luckily she avoided another bad injury. Yeah. But I uh, guess Vanessa Craven gets the victory, and this possibility could be the last match for Tessa Blanchard in Shimmer 
wrestling? We will find out in the weeks and months ahead. And that brought us to the main event of the evening and the weekend. Mercedes Martinez defended the Shimmer title against former partner Nicole Savoy. And Nicole Savoy is your new Shimmer champion as she defeated Mercedes Martinez to win the title here on Shimmer 99. And will now go in the Shimmer 100 WrestleMania weekend as your Shimmer World's Champion. Now, now Savoy, Savoy does, deserves a little credit for this victory, but I'm going to take 99% of it because before the last Shimmer tapings, I got Chaz and McKenzie booked on Wrestling Observer Live, and Chaz and McKenzie wins your Heart of Shimmer Championship. And this and this Shimmer tapings, I got Nicole Savoy booked on Wrestling Observer Live, and she won the Shimmer World title. So it's all thanks to me. You know, she had maybe 1%, 2% part of it, but the rest is up to me in San Antonio. So if you're a Shimmer wrestler or a women's wrestler and you want to win a title in Shimmer, hit me up because... That's the quickest way to get there because once I book you on Wrestling is Ever Live, the sky is the limit. So, <laughs> but uh, other than that, it, it was a really good match, and uh, Savoy would constantly stick her fingers in the air, and everyone would chant one now because they went, you know, they started chanting three at her, and now everyone is chanting number one at her. And great match, and now you have your new champion, and she's such an awesome, awesome girl. I mean, she's so nice. Uh, and stuff, and it's funny because, you know, I, I, I hated her at first when I first saw her. I didn't like her at all, and she knows that I didn't like her at all, And uh, but I, I was telling her, I go, man, your your performance throughout the two dates and the babyface turn was just perfectly done, I mean, everything, and I, I pretty much told her, I go, and you know me, I wouldn't bullshit you, and she's like, yeah, I know you, Ed, you wouldn't bullshit me at all, you tell me exactly if you thought it sucked. <laughs> And so and so so, uh, really happy for Nicole Savoy uh, being the new Shimmer champion and into an awesome three days of women's wrestling matches. Yes, definitely. Congratulations to Nicole Savoy on becoming a new Shimmer champion, man. And uh, you said start the rumors. If this means the end of Mercedes Martinez on the indie scene or not, we'll find out. She's still WSU champion. No word on their next date as they did not do a show last weekend with CZW, obviously, because once again, this is the second time this year WSU did not run because it fell on the same weekend as the Shimmer weekend and there'd be no women available. But uh, Mercedes loses her Shimmer title here to Nicole Savoy, man. Congratulations, Nicole Savoy. And that wrapped up. Shimmer 99 and the tapings for the weekend. Yeah, so now we can get to other shenanigans that happened over the weekend. And I know I'm going to forget something, but just little tidbits here and there I'll give you is uh, after the first night, uh, after, well, after the, the Saturday show, I had the honor of, of course, I got, you know, eating eating with Leva, and, but also I got to eat with uh, Lou Fisto and Vanessa Craven and uh, Lufisto's husband, and another girl that was with him. I'm not sure exactly the relationship, but she was real cool. And uh, we had dinner at TJ uh, Fridays, and I made sure to pick up the bill for all the drinks, you know, because I'm such a nice guy. But it was just so awesome talking to to, uh, Lufisto and and Craven, and Lufisto had a lot of stories, and it was just, it was was awesome. I, I was just listening to, listening to her, and, uh, and 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 also like Vanessa and Oliva, of course. And then uh, Solo Darley was sitting to the table next to us. I mean, there were a lot of girls there. Basically, um, I, I hooked up uh, Dave and Kevin with this friend of mine, Sir Highlight, who is like my partner in the WrestleMania get-togethers and Vegas get-togethers in Vegas. And he basically saved them some money on hotels. So. They were all pretty much, not all of them, they were like three three hotels, two of them were right next to each other, but, so they were all in the same vicinity, so yeah, it was like, uh, I, I bet a lot of people were wondering, why are so many good looking women here at this TGIF Friday <laughs> <laughs> that night, and then uh, it was funny, like, Sola didn't finish all her food, so Leva, of course, went over there and started playing with it and made like a, like a bunch of monuments with her leftover food and stuff, it was fucking hilarious. 
and uh, a, a fun fun night to end the night. Um, that that was cool. Um, the one time I got to talk to Kellyanne at one of the intermissions, I was like, uh, she didn't actually like hit me or anything, but there's a photo where she's got her hand on my chest, and my reaction, it looks like she just beat, like she just killed me with a chop or something. So I always joke that she viciously attacked me. So I'm like, yeah, you know, I'm a big fan, you know, even though you viciously attacked me. And she 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 got a kick out of that. And she's like, well, Ed, I I I like to apologize, but I just can't. <laughs> and uh, I got I got a, a kick out of that. That was pretty fucking funny and stuff. So I, I did get to talk to. I think I took like photos of thirty of the of the of the girls. Um, Pat Laprada was there. Uh, with the the guy he writes the books with, and they have the books, and they also have the PWI 500, or no, the the 50, the women's 50. So yes, women. I got everyone but Candice LeRae to sign that one. I had uh, the last two that I needed were, were like Marty and Candice, and they were right next to each other, and I got to Marty and got her to, to sign it, and then Candice had already walked away, and then she never came back out later, so... But basically, I got everybody else to sign that. I got to take uh, – the Japanese were charging like 10 for photos. So you could either use your phone or get a Polaroid. So I figured since I'm paying a little extra, I might as well get something I could take home with me. So I got Polaroids with with Shida and Matsumoto and Happy Maker and even awesome uh, Asia Kong. And that, I was just so marking out for that. That was awesome. And uh, I told uh, – I got the meet. I was actually going through your photos today. Not to, to, to interrupt, but I was actually looking at your photos with all the girls today that you have on Facebook, and I don't know what this says about me, but I almost knew 100% of them just having a photo of you, who they were, without having to have or written who they were, nothing. But pretty cool, man. You got your photo with everybody that weekend. Yeah, like at least three quarters, pretty close to it. Uh, yeah. What was I? I was about to say something. Um, damn, 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 damn. Um, oh, uh, I went up to Samantha Heights after the Rise show because, you know, I had tweeted at her that I really wanted to meet her after she impressed me so much at the last one. So I was talking to her and I'm like, hey, you know, I'm not like a real promoter or anything, but I got to co-promote an FSW show and I'm hoping they let me do it again and I definitely want you on the show. So she sounds like she's down for that. So hopefully she'll – I want to increase it from four girls to eight. So hopefully that it'll work out and she'll be able to do it and stuff. And then, you know, just got to – they're, 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 all of them are so – oh, every, they're all so nice. But when I got Tessa to sign the, the 500, the, the 50, uh, 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 Pro Wrestling Illustrated, she, she, she was nice. She signed it and she took a photo with me. But then she tells me, you know, you know this is a work, right? <laughs> you know, she's like, it's kind of bullshit that she goes – she goes, it's kind of bullshit that someone who's been hurt all year is ranked so high and so and so and stuff. I just, I just got a laugh out of that. <laughs> there you go. So Breaking was, news: yeah. PWI is a work, people. If you didn't notice yet, <laughs> Pro Wrestling <laughs> Illustrated is a work. You heard it from Tessa Blanchard first. <laughs> yeah, I, I got a big laugh out of that. That was funny, but. So, you know, no, got, there was no got, Ms. Hunter at the Shimmer Tapings reporting this weekend. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I got to talk to a bunch of them. And then uh, the after party on Sunday, they used to, like, they used to promote Pajons, and Pajons used to promote them, but they still they don't really do that no more, but they still go. So I, I went over there, and luckily there was a guy next to me, sitting next to me the whole weekend, uh, this black guy from California. And he was a real cool dude. Like, I had lost my phone charger one day, and he charged my phone just in case I it took a while for me to replace it. And then he offered to give me a ride to the after party. Uh, so, you know, save me an Uber. And a uh, real, real cool, nice guy. So we get there, and, and Python's is packed. And there's like a... <sighs> You know, we 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 uh, we get there and there's like a, I was like, man, should we ask for a table or? There's like another group of guys that were kind of just waiting there. And he's like, well, we could we could sit with these guys and so and so. And I'm like, kind of okay, but then I'm thinking maybe one of these guys is some asshole who talked some shit about me one time on Twitter. So I'm like, I don't know, fucking want to sit with this motherfucker if it's him. So I just kind of casually went back to the the host and I'm like, 
do you have any tables available now? And she's like, well, we have an eight eight person booth. So I was like, okay, I'll take that. So right away I text Mia and leave. I'm like, hey, you know, I got a table. There's a line. You know, I'll save you some seats. And then uh, a little bit later, Hudson and, and and Samantha walked in. So I went over. I'm like, hey, you know, I got a table already if you don't want to wait. So they came and sat with me and then Leva and Doom came uh, with Valentina Loca. So I was marking out that I got to eat, to eat with Valentina <laughs> Loca and stuff. And then what's funny is typical Leva. <laughs> like, remember I told you the story we went to the wrong airport WrestleMania weekend? Yes. And I had a haul ass I had a haul ass down the highway in downtown Dallas to get her to the right airport. Well, so we're sitting there and it's me and, and, and Hudson and Samantha and, and a friend of theirs that came or a friend of Samantha's that came. And, you know, I'm texting back and forth with Leva and she's like, Oh, we're almost done with our promos, okay. Next text, we're on our way and then I get a text I think we're at the wrong Pisons. Ah. <laughs> I, I I tell Hudson I like she went to the wrong Pisons. And Hudson, of course, straight face tells me, Ed, does that really surprise you? <laughs> and I was like, no, no, it doesn't. <laughs> but they they finally made it, so we ate. And there was a, a referee that also sat with us. Um, I know him, but I don't know his name. He wasn't on the, sh- the Shimmer tapings, but he's a he's – he's a, you, you would know who he was if you saw him. Um, right. So we sat there. And then uh, um, I, 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 they, oh, they had these brand new shimmer, t- nice shimmer t- uh, turnbuckles, and they were going to give or sell ten of the twelve, and then two they were going to auction, and they got the champions to sign it. So I got one of those. I had a, it was kind of hard because you're supposed to go on the website and buy it before the tapings on Sunday, and I only had my phone, so I was like, you know, I had a, I had to pull the Ed and San Antonio card and pull some strings. To make sure I got my turnbuckle, <laughs> you know what I mean. So, so it pays off to be at the Antonio sometimes. <laughs> uh, not a lot of times because I get a lot of heat, but I get a lot of heat. But this time it paid off. But so I, I, I was able to get like it came with the champions. I got, I got Charlie Evans to sign it. I got uh, um, Jessica Troy to sign it. I got Hudson to sign it. Samantha to sign it. Uh, Mia to sign it. Uh, I got the Japanese to sign it, uh, which is awesome. It's it's priceless now because Aja Kong's signature is on it. Uh, well, it was priceless until I got Dave Prezak to sign it, and then he lowered the value of it. But I had to give Dave. Dave, who was fucking drunk out of his goddamn mind at the end of the afternoon. Uh, <laughs> that was, I that think was fucking, you did fucking get a hilarious. picture with Dave Prezak during the weekend as well. The busiest man in Chicago. He was able to grab him for a second. Yeah, I got him. I got him at the uh, on Friday, so when he had, he didn't have as much to do, and uh, he was he was telling the stories about being backstage at TNA. I mean, not TNA. <laughs> excuse me, NXT. No, the Mae Young Classic. NXT, the Mae Young Classic. So yes. yeah, cool stories. But I got the turnbuckle. I got it signed, so that was awesome, and uh, that was cool. And then uh, when I, I went, I was talking to Savoy and Mia, and they were sitting at a table. See, I had a booth, and then there was a table to the side, and and across from that table was the Japanese and Prezak, you know. So I, so I was sitting next to Savoy. So basically, I'm right next to Aja Kong, who's chugging these giant-ass drinks and having, a, and then also, like, some wine. And she made Mia drink some wine, and Mia just barely had it touch her lips <laughs> or whatever. And she made Savoy <laughs> drink some of her wine and, it was just, I was just sitting there like, I can't, I can't believe I'm sitting next to Aja Kong getting fucking wasted and shit. All the Japanese were having a good time and being really loud while they were drinking. It was fucking great, dude. So that after party was awesome. It's funny because I'm over here sitting with everybody and there's like a group of the, of the people who are kind of to the side, you know, they kind of wait till people kind of like move around. You know, you're not, you're not supposed to go bug them when they're eating, but since some of them right. are eating with me and then I know the other ones so well. I'm like looking. All these people are probably like, "This is fucking asshole breaking." You know, ah. you know, fucking over there <laughs> when he should be over here with us, just waiting and shit. <laughs> and like I say, sometimes it pays oh, to be a champ. Eat the one ham and egg is sitting with them. <laughs> right, right. I guarantee you, that's what a few of them were thinking. But, but, but you know what? Most of the people who go to Shimmer are super cool. I've I've met so many nice people there, and uh, there there are a few people who are like 
annoying or think there's somebody that they're not. But for the most part, 90% well, of them weird. are super yeah, the cool. Shimmer's one of them things. Let me say what the people who go to sh- Shimmer's one of the things where a lot of people go to every show and sit in the same spot. So it's very much like a, a I want to say family atmosphere, but it's like everybody knows everybody because they sit in the same seats like every Shimmer taping and whatnot. It's, like kind of like yeah, a, and a, like, there, there were there were a few yeah. people missing. Like Dave, uh, cartoon Dave, wasn't there this time. The one dude who dresses up mm-hmm. like John Cena, he wasn't there. Uh, Caden, the little kid, he wasn't there. But a lot yeah. of other regulars and a lot of like like I say, the like more than ninety percent of them are super cool. There are a few people who are annoying. Uh, they have I don't know this superior attitude or whatever. But fuck those people. But everyone else, awesome. I had a great time hanging out with everybody, seeing everybody. And, uh, yeah, it was just a great weekend, man. It was just, uh, you know, at the, at the end, that one guy was nice enough to give me and Leva right back to the hotel. And, uh, you know, once saved me, like I say, he probably saved me 30 bucks just on those two rides, maybe more on because Uber, you know, Uber Uber cost. And, uh, yeah, Especially it was, on a uh, Friday it was great. Night. You know? <laughs> it was Sunday yeah, night. Yeah, I'm trying to trying to think of anything else happen, which I know I'll think about as soon as we hang up and stuff. But, yeah, it was really great, really great experience. I mean, I got to see a whole lot of wrestling. I got to hang out with uh, and meet new people. Because like, I never really talked to LaFisto before. And, and she is so nice, man. That's what I really got to put over about LaFisto. She is a sweetheart. She's one of the nicest women wrestlers I've ever met. I mean, she she's so, so nice. And then uh, Samantha was awesome. I really liked hanging out with Samantha. Hudson, you know, anytime I can hang out with Hudson, I got to hang out with her in Vegas and one time in Texas. And I like Hudson because she she doesn't hold back. You know, she says what's on her mind, <laughs> and uh, she's 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 really straight straightforward. <laughs> she's real funny. I mean, she's Hudson's awesome. I really really like hanging out with her. And hopefully, she's gonna make a few shows here in Texas in December before she moves out toward uh. Uh, the Midwest. I think she's moving to the Midwest, and uh, we're gonna. I'm gonna take her to the Riverwalk and and show her the, the Riverwalk uh, uh, one night, which would be cool because it's Christmas time and the Christmas lights will be on. So hopefully, they get to hang out with Hudson. Uh, you know, in, in just a few weeks, I guess, or a little more than that, but sometime around there. So and then, you know, I get to. I talk to Leva all the t- all the time, and got to talk to Mia and. And I was telling her she needs to start selling Stannis gear because her dog is almost as over as she is <laughs> and stuff. And she was kind of like, yeah, that sounds like a good idea. I might try that. And, uh, yeah, it was just really cool. I mean, it was awesome meeting Medusa and uh, talked to Miranda the first night and and, uh, and Thunder Rosa a little bit. And it was uh, just everything was just fantastic. I mean, if you're buying front row, it's kind of expensive, but I mean, I really put over these 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 shows. I mean, you're gonna get some awesome women's like you know NXT has the one awesome women's match. You're gonna get fucking twenty of those over the weekend, basically. And unlike WWE, where you're very lucky if you get to even meet one of them because they're so you know they're on schedule. They gotta leave this that. You you if you really try, you'll get to meet whoever you want at Shimmer, and they will give you some time. I mean, they're not you know they don't just take the photo and you know get the hell out of here next person. They they talk to you and stuff. So it's a really good experience, and it's really worth the money. And like I say, almost everybody's cool there, and uh, the shows are awesome. And, you know I I can't put over Shimmer enough. You know what I mean? You know a lot of people want to go to PWEG. Or I guess now some p- people are go go all the way to Japan, but me myself, my my preferred thing is fuck that, fuck Japan, fuck PWG. I want to go to Shimmer, and I'm gonna do everything possible to go to every Shimmer. Uh, the next one might be hard because it might be the week after WrestleMania, so I need to bite down and save some money for that because I'll definitely be <laughs> at WrestleMania. But uh, yeah, it's awesome. I mean, Dave Dave should be very proud of what he's done. Uh, same thing with Kevin. Uh, Lexi Fife, uh, cause she was the only one there. Portia wasn't there. Danger wasn't there. So I don't know if they still had impact, but Lexi Fife is, is such an incredible booker. I mean, you can tell just by, you can tell when she left shine basically because they did have good angles and now it sucks. Yeah. It's tough. <laughs> and speaking of which, 
Speaking of which, like, uh, uh, you know, when that, they, they announced the Shimmer WrestleMania show, you know, of course, everything was going to be sold in the packages first. And I'm like, man, fuck that. You know, I, don't, I mean, I can't afford to go to every show. I don't want to buy tickets for road tickets to every show. I just want Shimmer, and we're going to get screwed because these people probably aren't going to buy the, the package and not even go. So, you know, pull, uh, you know, I, I know people. So, like I say, it pays to be in San Antonio. I got the heads up that there were some seats available front row. And uh, just yeah. to contact Sal and let him know how many I needed. And Sal, I guess, I don't know what he heard or what, but he's unfriended me on Facebook. So, you know, Gabe already hates my fucking guts. Now Sal <laughs> is, is probably pissed off at me or whatever. So I've, like, told my friend, I go, hey, man, I need you to email this guy. Tell him we need four seats to tell him that I was at the buddy and so and so because I didn't want to do it. I didn't want Sal telling you, fuck you, motherfucker. You're not sitting front row at our seats. So I so I, I did get front row for uh, WrestleMania. I might have just blown it by telling the story right now, but hopefully that, will, that won't happen. But <laughs> I will be hopefully front row shimmer at WrestleMania weekend and hopefully at the next shimmer tapings and stuff. So, yeah, overall, it was just a great fucking weekend. Uh, and stuff, and if, I don't know, anything you want to just ask out of, in general, maybe it'll bring something back to me or something. You know, go ahead before we leave. Well, Shimmer, the next Shimmer show will be Shimmer 100, and it will be WrestleMania weekend in New Orleans, and should end up being available live on iPay-Per-View, as it has been the last three years. And then, as you just mentioned, apparently they're going to run the following weekend, which is very tough asking people to travel a week after WrestleMania. So it'll be interesting to see if they keep them dates or it does end up moving because that is a rough weekend to run the week after WrestleMania when the majority of your crowd is a flying crowd and the majority of wrestling fans do fly in to WrestleMania unless a lot of people just stick around for the week and go up to Chicago. I don't know. That's asking a real lot of wrestling fans. We'll see. And, uh, yeah, I think, I, think there, I think there might be more foreigners. I think there might be more foreigners who might just decide to stick around. You know what I mean? They're already the spending money coming, so it's like, sugar. okay, let's stay a few more days. It's a possibility. And Rise, who ran Friday, is their next show is going to be December 1st. They're going to be out in Southgate, California, as they'll be doing a double header Friday and Saturday night with alternative wrestling show at their home base in Southgate and they got a huge main event here in the United States could be the first time ever the world of stardom championship is going to be on the line when Tony Storm defends against Mercedes Martinez on that rise show in Southgate on December 1st so Kevin Harvey pulling some big strings to make that a big rise show coming up December 1st the end of the year. Yeah, and besides Bull and McConnell, they're they're also bringing in um, the guy who runs Stardom. So I mean, that's a big opportunity for some girls to get a, some tours in, in Stardom. I mean, it it's for yeah. one, it's it's big profile. It's, it's you know people hear about it, and second, it's a good way to improve because you're in there with some of the best. You know what I mean? Like Rebel, who yes. is that a very good worker? She's gotten a little better after doing her tour and. You know, it, it it helps being there. It's 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 you know it, it raises your stock as far as your name value, and it also raises your stock as far as your work rate too. So, good good deal there. And I think it'd be in everybody's best interest to see Stardom Rise and Shimmer all work together for sure. Oh, definitely. I would love to see Osha Rai at the next Shimmer tapings. That'd be awesome. Man, you start bringing some of them stardom girls, I might have to make a return to Shimmer. <laughs> yeah, well, you got some place gotcha. to room. <laughs> yeah. Man, as long as you're staying at a good place and not that shithole that most of the fans stay at. <laughs> oh, I, I, no, like I say, I took care of it. I got they they were staying at better hotels this time, yeah. thanks to me. Yeah. Yeah, because so, that, uh... Yeah, and... That place that a lot of the fans stay, I can't think of the name off the top of my head. I refuse to stay the there anymore, way. man. It's the that's it. it's such a shithole, man. Do not stay at the roadway. Trust Tom Richards. Avoid the roadway. It's a roach hotel. 
motel. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've never stayed there. Yeah. It, it is convenient. You know, it's very close to the, the, the venue, but I've never stayed there. Yeah. I don't plan to. I always stay by Midway and stuff. That's so. the only positive. Oh. It's close to the venue. <laughs> that's where the positive is. I always stay at a hotel that's got some free breakfast. Fuck, this hotel's got like three cable channels on the fucking box. With no free breakfast, man. <laughs> Does it at least have porn? Does and every time I stay there, the rooms are all fucked up. What? <laughs> Does it at like least have a porn channel? channel? Man, I couldn't even get fucking ESPN the last time I was there, and you want porn. <laughs> <laughs> Good no, luck with but that. No, I think that's a- the lady's missing all her teeth that works the front desk. Like, you don't know what type of place you're talking about here. <laughs> yeah. No, the places I stay got usually have free breakfast, have free shuttle from the airport to the place. So that also – because it, it's, it's only like a few miles from the freaking airport, but I guess they charge you more for airport Ubers or whatever because it was like 12 bucks the last time. So I was like, oh, I'm taking this goddamn shuttle. But, so well, It depends what airport yeah, you're flying so. to, too. Chicago's got multiple airports. Be one of the bigger yeah, cities. Yeah. So yeah, it was a great trip, man. I I can't put it over enough. Yeah. But yeah, it was awesome. But we've actually gone about a little over thirty minutes over the uh, two hour live feed. So we'll go ahead and wrap it up. I want to thank you, Tom Richards, formerly of the Uncle Mike and Tom Show. Hopefully, you guys maybe will make a couple of uh, shows here and there. Where, where else am I going to come on and rant and talk shit and get heat about if uh, if you guys don't? Because I don't really do a whole lot of my shows anymore. Uh, I think Couture, it's funny because every time Couture asks if I want to do a show, there's something going on. And usually, you know, I, I'm usually free on Friday nights because I don't work on Friday nights. And uh, he's like, hey, you want to do a show? I'm like, dude, I'm going to be in Chicago. <laughs> and then it's he's not, like, you know, okay, you want to do a show this week? Yeah. It's unfortunate that we all can't get paid like Brian Alvarez and Dave Meltzer to do podcasts. You know what I mean? <laughs> I know, especially because I'm so much better than Brian Alvarez. You know what I mean? <laughs> I mean, the only reason wrestling was ever live is famous is because in San Antonio or in Texas in the early Yada days carried that show. Carried that show. Dave knows. <laughs> Dave knows. At least you <laughs> still watch the product, my friend. <laughs> Uh, well, Brian watches, uh, but he only watches WWE, basically. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. And today has become, today's uh, become such uh, a PWG uh, fanboy. It's kind of like uh, annoying. I, I get to kick all the people, give them shit about it. <laughs> yeah. Guess what? Dave uh, Meltzer likes New Japan. Get over it, man. It's, 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 it's all his opinion and nothing more. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's it's funny. And it's funny because the, the people who gets in arguments, you look at their profile and they got like 20 followers. It's like, right? why are you wasting your time, Dave? But it's so entertaining, Dave, you know, daving people, you know. Reading would be your friend or just... I don't, I don't know. know. Some people don't like it, but I they, get a kick out of Dave going crazy. They need to t- sell a T-shirt, at Wrestling Observer, just that says "Reading would be your friend." <laughs> That's it, <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, we'll go ahead and wrap it up, and uh, hopefully, we'll get to talk soon. Um, since you're not doing the show, uh, it'll probably just be through Twitter or whatever for a while. But uh, it's always great talking to you. Uh, tell Uncle Mike yeah. I said hello. He's such a, he's a cool dude. I like Uncle Mike, and uh, yeah, he's yeah. awesome. Do that. And uh, let me let me let me do my plugs real quick. Uh, it's funny because I forgot to let Stevie J know that I was running a show tonight. So <laughs> yeah, he did. It, I, I didn't get advertised on on any of the Angry Marks stuff, but hopefully I'll get the download on everything. <laughs> but shout out to Stevie J and AngryMarks dot com for. You can always download and stream our show at angrymarks.com. It's also on iTunes at keywords, uh, angrymarks.com. And uh, like I said, I don't do a whole lot of them anymore, but hopefully there'll be some popping up here and there. You can also download and stream our show at blogtalkradio.com slash Couture and older shows at blogtalkradio.com slash edward Laredo. You can follow me at Facebook at Edward Laredo, and you can follow me at Twitter at Ed in San Antonio. And uh, I don't know if you have anything you'd like to plug there. 
You can follow me on Twitter at the Tom Richards, man. Bang. Zoom. That's it. I got nothing to plug anymore. <laughs> I'm retired. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I will. I guess we'll I'll go ahead and finish the show. Um, well, no problem, man. Uh, it's always a pleasure being on on your shows back in the day, and uh, nice to return the favor. So, yeah, nice talking to you. I hope everybody enjoyed the very long show we just did. And I hope I did shimmer justice. And uh, hopefully I'll be talking to you all soon. I have no clue when, but uh, it'll happen sometime. So everybody have a good night, and we will talk to everyone later. And now I just got to see if I can figure out how to work the clothing theme song and then actually end the show because I hardly ever do it over the phone. And uh, I'm not the most technical person in the world. So here we go. All right, I'm already fucking shit up. Uh. <laughs> All right. God, the fuck is this thing? D music, D music, D music, D music, D music. Where are you? Where are you? Where are you? And uh, here we go. Oh, here we go. Well, that might not be working. I don't hear anything. God damn. Anyway, I'm ending the show. Everyone have a good night. Bye. End the show, damn it. Peace. See ya. What the fuck is going on? <laughs> We're still on the air. They won't let us in. Yeah, I, I, I hit the button to end, but we're still on the air, so now I don't know what I need to do to hang the fuck up. <laughs> Two hours and 40 oh, minutes man. is not enough for women's wrestling time. <laughs> this is funny. I think there is a limit, so there might be like an extra 30 minutes of just dead air <laughs> before it is on itself, <laughs> but what the fuck? How do I... Jesus Christ, dude. Only me. Only I could fuck this up. And it's weird because it says <laughs> no callers, but you're still on the line, so I don't know what the fuck's going on. <laughs> Goddamn. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let me refresh this thing, see what happens. Oh, I know. I could just hang up. That'll end the show. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Technology. All right, here we go. Everybody, up. goodbye.